You're about to watch another exciting episode of The Dungeon Run, but did you know that you can actually be part of the adventure? Tune in live on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific time, and you can make your voice heard and help determine the fate of our adventurers. Hope to see you there. Greetings, and welcome to The Dungeon Run, a live tabletop role-playing game where your interactions help tell the tale. I am Lord Ereban, the Keeper of Secrets, and I have brought these adventurers together and set them on an epic quest to decide the fate of the world. When they found my amulet, it gave them the key to unlock the mysteries of Ein and allowed them to communicate with you, the Watchers of the Time Stream. Now you have the power to help or hinder them as you see fit. If this is your first episode, fear not. Our Dungeon Master will catch you up on everything you need to know to jump right in. And you can always watch past episodes by visiting our YouTube or listen to the audio version by searching for The Dungeon Run wherever you get fine podcasts. The Dungeon Run is made possible through the generous support of our patrons. Bonus shows, special content, and more is available when you become a supporter at patreon.com slash the dungeon run and join the incredible dungeon run community by visiting the official unofficial discord at the dungeon dot run slash discord also don't forget to like and subscribe it really does make a difference but now sit back relax enter the world of Ein, and let the dice roll <laughs> <laughs> the Dungeon Run, episode Woo. 109. Wow. Woo. One. Uh, oh. And uh, if this is your first episode, Nine. a special, extra special, special welcome to you. Don't worry. I'm going to cover everything you need to know to just jump right into our story right here very shortly. But first, I want to welcome you. I want to welcome our patrons over at patreon.com slash the dungeon run. The reason we get to keep making this show is because of our patrons. Uh, welcome them. Welcome the watchers of the time stream to this episode. Uh, should be a good one. I'm very excited about it. Uh, we got a, a few little quick updates. Uh, Ron, tell us about merch. Uh, merch I, I, it, update is the same from last week, which is all of the 100th episode merch and Christmas stuff is gone. Uh, I'm going to be adding more stuff at the end of here in February, uh, but no, nothing other than that. Uh, I do. Oh, actually, I do have one thing. More beanie colors have been restocked. Yeah. So make sure you go and find them. Uh, they told me they weren't going to restock them, and they lied to me. But that's all the benefit <laughs> to you. So that's great. Beanie colors. We love beanie colors. I have two different beanies. I wear them all the time here in snowy Colorado. It's the best. Uh, they're they are delightfully warm and stylish i wear them beanies. in 90 degree burbank and uh, <laughs> i've been sweating a lot well more. <laughs> which one of us is a hipster <laughs> true 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 uh, uh <laughs> so what else we got uh morgan did you did you have uh something you wanted to tease uh, no i mean i i think we we talked it a little bit but we've got some big announcements coming um oh well first off this week we unveiled on the cooldown and shortly after our brand new channel trailer uh which we're Ooh. super excited about for youtube and twitch and everywhere it's just it's just a beautiful little 30 second nugget of the goodness that is the dungeon run uh that oh you man can... i love it so and much we're so happy with it uh, uh jessica lynn parsons did an crazy an incredible job with it uh mm -hmm. and and we're so happy with how Thank it's you. come out i've uh, watched so... it about 40 times <laughs> And I just love, I just love how that music kicks in. It's kicks like in. it's such a perfect needle drop, Jessica. Rock and roll. Sure, sure. Thanks. I think we might have it. Uh, should what? we should we throw to a clip like we're a talk show? <laughs> <laughs> it started as a simple dungeon run, but it has become a quest of gods and dragons. We fought dragons and went into dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons. Anybody consider that we might die? Every day since I've met you.
Hey, we're Rumble. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Very cool. <Woo! laughs> Good job, Jessica. That's awesome. Woo! Hey, please send it to your friends. That's the best yeah. way to, to support our shows. Are you going to say, Jeff? Uh, I was, but you're, you're saying it better than I am. This was. is this is was it's, we made it to be 30 seconds, so it's super shareable. It's like a slap in the face. This is our show. <laughs> this is what our community says about us. This is the tone. This is how much fun we have. So. Yeah, sharing that video, making it viral, that's the best yeah. way to support us. So s Hope. slap your friends in the face. That's right. what yeah. we're saying. So if you got anything message. from what I just Moral said, it's that. Yeah. Yeah. has a different approach than some of us. <laughs> <laughs> There's one takeaway from tonight's episode. Slap your friends in the face. Right. Um, okay, so I mentioned the Patreon at patreon.com slash the dungeon run. If you are not already a patron, please consider it. Go over there, check out the cool tiers. There's lots of really fun bonuses and perks you get if you like the show there's lots of extra content including the aforementioned cooldown which is our bonus talk back show a really fun episode this week uh lots of rock talk <laughs> lots <laughs> like of rock, rock talk. talk you wow, want to get in on that sounds like a dj yeah <laughs> we got so many rock 95.5 rock talk, talk. The Rock Talk. Really? Um, it, it felt uh, like a rock con, like a miniature online rock con. Uh -huh. is what it was. <laughs> oh, it's uh, great. And it is it is uh, exclusive to our patrons uh, for a window of time. So you, you want to get in there and get in on that. There's also cast secrets, which are cool. I owe a, uh, a DM tier, uh, and I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. So stay tuned for that, where I'll give uh, all kinds of stat sheets and inside info on uh, making the episodes. And, um, you know, that's just how the show is possible. So check that out. We also, uh, you can support the show if you're watching live here on Twitch, mm -hmm. twitch.tv slash The Dungeon Run. Uh, you can obviously subscribe to the show, which is useful. Uh, but also we sell items, digital items, that can influence the story in, in real time. You can buy advantage and disadvantage for all of our players and me. And you can also influence our tug of war. We do a team force of good versus team force of evil tug of war every single episode and that involves purchasing balloons gold and purple for the two different teams and our potatoes the golden potato for team force of good the purple yam for team force of evil and the result of that tug of war at the end of each episode unlocks a card for the following episode last week right at the end of the show there was a crazy back and forth it was really right. fun uh but it turned out that team force of evil prevailed at that the happened. end of last week which unlocks a Force of Evil card uh, on the show. I should also mention, we've already gotten a number of potatoes and yams oh. uh, donated this episode, including a golden potato from Idaho Judd, who nice. you would just assume Idaho Judd would be all about <laughs> the potatoes. You know? yeah. Idaho Judd, which is a name I have not seen before. I think yeah. I saw a note that Idaho Judd but it was his, it was his 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 possibly uh, first live episode. So Welcome if you're here, Idaho nice. Judd. I'm yes. assuming Idaho Judd just uh, took his bindle off of the uh, the train that he right. hitched a ride on. From Boise, yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened. Uh, Idaho <laughs> Judd. Um, and uh, we also got a golden potato from Whisper Josephine, mm. who says, uh, "In loving memory of my friend Karen." Oh, nice. Very sweet Aww. thing yeah. to do. Uh, thank thank you. you and. Um, we really appreciate that, and, and we'll keep Karen in our thoughts as well. Uh, Red Robin 1972 says, Happy birthday to you, Red Robin! <laughs> Happy birthday, Red Robin! Probably someone else purchasing for uh, Red Robin. <laughs> Either way, uh, we really appreciate the Golden Potato. Happy birthday from us. We also got an evil yam from Dire Nair. Thank you, Dire Nair. Uh, and some balloons from that gamer share, Jar Full of Bees and Torchy. And that brings our tug Archie. of war currently to <laughs> Team Force of Good, 76%. Team Ooh, Force hooray. of Evil, 24%. Torchy uh, sounds like what Ugo would call his torch. Like that would be the name for Torchy. <laughs> Here in Colorado, there is Torchy's Tacos, which is like a really prominent oh. chain. Torchums. <laughs> I had that. I had that when I was there. It's good, Tor right? It was good. Real good, yeah. Torchy's Tacos are amazing. Before I got sick. <laughs> this episode brought to you by... Um, and Idaho Joe. <laughs> and Idaho Joe. <laughs> Judd. <laughs> Judd. And potatoes. Spud. Idaho uh, Spud. <laughs> sure. Oh, there you go. Um, all right. So the force card that was unlocked is a Force of Evil card. This is mm. one that was uh, uh, submitted quite a while ago. You can submit cards. These are submitted by fans just like you. You don't even have to be a patron to submit 
a force card. You can do it right on our website. And this one was submitted a while ago by our friend, Aegis13. This one is called, You Can't Please Everyone. <laughs> Once sure. per player this session, the DM can ask all the other players to guess the value of an attack or saving throw d20 roll before they roll it. The difference between the highest over guess and the actual roll subtracts from the current roll. The difference between the lowest under guess and the actual roll subtracts from the lowest guesser's next roll. It's a little complicated, but I'll walk you through You'll it. You'll keep track of it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And if anyone, <laughs> guesses it, if anyone guesses it exactly, the guesses remain the same, but the roller re-rolls. I was hoping you were going to say the Vardo magically reassembles. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then lights on fire. <laughs> so, the way this breaks down is what you want to, what, what you need to know is you, you want to try to guess not the exact number that the roller is rolling, but as close to it as possible. So you want to be just yeah. one off because that is the least variation and will cause the least okay. havoc. So we want to price as right it. Yeah, 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 I guess. Sorry, I, mean, I missed. Which rolls are these? These are rolls that I select. I will select yeah, okay. one per player uh, okay. during the course of the episode. Okay. Any, not, so any roll you choose. Not Correct. all not rolls, it. thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Yes, no, that'd be a little much. <laughs> all fun. right. So that is the card that is in effect. Uh, Jessica, tell me what's going on in the chat. Uh, well, we have lots of support to start the show off right. Um, as usual, thank you so much. I just saw Numera gave us a cheer, a jar full of bees with a huge cheer. We completed a level four hype train tonight, so thank you for that. <laughs> Fallstar with a cheer. Um, we got some gift subs from Fallstar um, and also more from Fallstar. Um, wow. A gift from a jar full of bees, more from Fallstar, <laughs> a, a, a gift sub from Kitty Scritches. A cheer from Kitty Scritches, another huge cheer from Fallstar, a big cheer from Joral's Love Child, um, another you. gift sub from Melodies of Old, some cheers from Sitar, Svanetti, Numera, Red Robin. I see Witch wow. Space in there too. So much. Thank you so much. Everybody. Awesome. Thank you so much. Wouldn't awesome. Joral's Love Child mean that Joral had a good day at least one point in his life? <laughs> <laughs> Just one day. Right? <laughs> the family love show, child, yeah, very, right? Family show. Uh, <laughs> I also want to give a quick shout out to Melanie's senior English class. Oh, which I'm told uh, watches the show. Oh, so, hey. I believe Hello. they're studying Beowulf. English. Wow. Beowulf. Love I will say what way Gardena Theod Kuningas. Oh man, is Old the first of evil card that we have to quote hey, hey, Beowulf Sean, and Sean sound is weird. Is. <laughs> Sean, Jeff's sound went off. Can we uh, speak that? All right. Uh, have we covered everything in the pre-show? I believe so. You did a All great right. job. Then there is only one thing left to do, and that is to light the torch. started as a simple dungeon run, but it has become a quest to uncover the lost history of Ein. No one can remember anything from before the War of Ideas 300 years ago. No written knowledge, no records, no information of any kind survived the end of that cataclysmic event. Some, like the conclave of wizards known as the Natural Order, committed to learning what caused the war and how to stop it from happening again. Their members spread across the realms, searching for any clues that might reveal the truth of the Ariat Age. When our adventurers discovered an ancient amulet that dates back to that time, they brought it to a wizard of the Order named Torvald the Timid, 
Torvald told them that he and his apprentice were searching for one of the mythical wardens, the 100-foot-tall elemental beings that ended the war and have protected the realms ever since. As peace persisted, the wardens fell into legend, but Torvald and his order believed they were real and could be the key to answering the questions of Ein's lost history. The natural order also believed that the wardens had been captured, kidnapped by a cunning and ruthless foe, and held in dangerous locations. Torvald sent the team up to investigate a lodestar, a gleaming tower floating in the clouds, and the home of the caretakers of the sky, the Sky Children. The team found the magical lodestar transformed into a technological prison. The lightning-infused Storm Warden chained to the walls and used as a battery to power a mad scientist's diabolical machines. The heroes fought their way to the top of the tower, defeated the Tinker and his clockwork army, and freed the Warden. When they did, their ancient amulet activated. Connecting with the Storm Warden, it unlocked memories hidden in the being's subconscious. The team was transported back in time to live out a vision of the past, to witness the very creation of the Wardens themselves. They saw the Queen of the Dragonborn Empire use shimmering motes of elemental power to transform five champions of the Ariat Age into the Wardens, giving up their memories, identities, and everything they had ever known the champions grew into the towering sentinels and fought off a deadly dragon attack. When the vision ended, the team knew they had to track down the rest of the Wardens, free them from the clutches of the Cabal, and unlock the remaining memories to understand exactly what happened 300 years ago. But the journey was not easy. They discovered that members of the Cabal had attacked Lily's island home of Bingle, harvesting bodies to create a hideous undead army. Deep under the ocean, they held the Inferno Warden, restrained by a mighty kraken and guarded by an amphibious warrior. Once again, the team defeated a member of the Cabal and freed the Warden, unlocking more visions of the past. This time, they saw the burning of the world's libraries, the purging of records and written knowledge of the Ariat Age. And they saw a child, the elven champion Mirasis Blue giving birth in secret. Seeking a third warden brought the team through dwarven lands and deep inside the volcano known as Sky Scorcher Peak. They learned that even those who still believed in the wardens were only aware that four had ever existed and that great pains had been taken to erase the presence of the fifth warden from any minds old enough to remember. They also came face to face with the leader of the Cabal, a powerful spellcaster known as the Ashen Mage. Atop the roiling volcano, they witnessed the scale and scope of her plan. The Ashen Mage had extracted the motes of power from the three wardens she had captured, the Storm Warden, the Inferno Warden, and the Typhoon Warden, and had managed to form a scale pact with the Sun Dragon. Even the combined might of the two freed wardens seemed no match for her. When all seemed lost, she made Fahima a stunning offer join her side and learn dark magic as her apprentice, or watch her friends die. But she had failed to account for one tiefling's enduring love. Vic, a member of the Ashen Mage's Cabal, had grown up with Siv and still cared for him so much she was willing to sacrifice herself to save him. She smashed a magical urn, unleashing a devastating blast that allowed the heroes to escape. In doing so, so, it also unleashed a new enemy into the world. The wave of energy that emitted from the urn spawned heretofore unseen terrors, demons that ravaged cities and towns across the realms. But Vic's sacrifice allowed the heroes to meet the Typhoon Warden and witness her memories from before the war. They saw that the champions of the Ariat Age were the ones who set fire to the libraries, burning the world's information. They watched the baby born of Mirasis Blue taken by a winged Aarakocra into safekeeping. And they saw the fifth warden, Mirasis Blue herself, unwilling to forget, ripping and pulling the intellect devourers from her body as they attempted to wipe her mind clean of its memories. The next time the team encountered the wardens, 
It was in the city of Turles, which was under attack from the rampaging demon horde. The heroes of Bingle had been able to secure another legendary prize, the God Slayer Blade, hidden deep inside a vault beneath the city, and they attempted to use it in Turles' defense. The powerful Lord of Crows led the demonic assault on the city, but when it saw Siv charge the God Slayer Blade, it stole the sword right from his hands and turned it on the approaching wardens. A single savage blow struck down the Inferno Warden and gave proof to the potency of the ancient weapon. Surviving the demon attack, the team moved north to learn about the origins of the God Slayer Blade and the amulet that had set them on this path in the first place. Both items were forged 300 years ago by the champions of the Ariat Age from the carcass of the mightiest dragon to ever live, the Chrono Dragon, Nonezeron. The heroes of Bingle knew they had to find the Quake Warden before the Ashen Mage did, and that Fahima's father, Conroy Tig, had been on the trail of the Warden when he disappeared. They used a map drawn from Conroy's own recollections to guide them to a little-known region in the Northwest, deep in hostile Shots and Gao territory, called Orms. Nearing the location on the map, they encountered an enormous footprint that could only have been left by a Warden. Hallowed and silenced, the footprint had been made into a holy site, apparently by the robed insectoid creatures nearby. Fighting off a rock monster, the team finally arrived at the massive peaks and hillocks that made up Orms. There, they found acceleration gates, arcane rings left by Conroy Tig himself inside gaps in the rock, rock that morphed and changed like water. The entire terrain moved and shifted with violent force, stone and earth forming and reforming before their very eyes. In a leap of faith, Ugo ran into the maelstrom and shot headlong into one of Conroy's acceleration gates. Flung through the ever-shifting rock, he miraculously landed unscathed, the speed and trajectory of the acceleration spell perfectly timed to the fluctuations of the mountainside. The rest of the team followed, and soon they found themselves deep inside a hidden chamber. Quiet and empty, the room seemed to be a dead end. Any words spoken inside caused the very ground itself to react, to slam them with punishing force. All the while, a massive boulder rolled from wall to wall, threatening to trample anyone in its path. As we ended last week, the team managed to activate a number of glowing stone orbs inside the chamber, setting the room aglow and opening a stone at the far end of the room. A way in. As they peer into the unknown, the question remains, what lies beyond the door? And that is where we will pick up this week. Wow. We that was go. a good one. That, uh, that one made me nervous. That, that one make any... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. It's not just me. All right, good. Nope. <laughs> Generally nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we can return right away to the map room as we are picking oh up God. right where we left off. And you all can hop right in uh, to see this transformed chamber. Uh, it lit up when you all, and all with right. the help of the uh, unseen servant, uh, USU. And, yeah, USU, that's right. <laughs> Union. Uh, uh, it, it transformed, it uh, it lit up, and all of the orbs remained uh, aglow, and the that exit, that stone that was blocking the exit, lifted up, revealing a passageway out of this room. Right. Are those squiggles did, there? The, like, they are. Kind of glowy uh, they're sort of. Uh, they they appeared after the room transformed, right? And they match uh, basically the uh, the pattern the that you mark. noticed on the stone outside. Yeah. The question mark that continues, kind of. Correct. Yeah. It also uh, matches that little symbol that was on the map that the map maker Baker gave you. Mm. Um, that was that corresponded to that stone uh, on the outside of this entire structure very cool um we still don't know if we can um, james is thinking to himself we still don't know if we can talk in here um 
I was going to say, three, <laughs> two, one, cue Uggo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Uggo is still an eagle, uh, has, has, having been polymorphed by uh, Fahima. I neglected to put that in the, in the, uh, in the recap, which I should have. But, yes, Uggo is still uh, an eagle. He's Minor up in the upper right-hand corner of, this, of the uh, map. He's an eagle. Um, but, yes, um, when, you, yeah. when you caw uh, quite loudly, uh, it reverberates through this room, but it doesn't seem to cause any damage to you. And you see Uggo Eagle kind of flap his wings and beat, kind of beat his chest in pride and weighs them high. <laughs> Himo will look up at her at her creation and uh, turn back to the room and say, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to investigate the portal. The door. Is anything uh, oh. happened? Oh, okay. What well? What would you like to do? Oh, so I don't get hurt. Oh, when you talk, when you speak, nothing I, happens. No, that's okay, correct. okay, great. Making yes. noise in here <laughs> seems to uh, having uh, ac uh, activated the room and transformed it into this state where the uh, exit is open and the room is aglow. It seems to have uh, stopped whatever that effect was that caused pain from the floor when you yeah. spoke. And okay, when so she talks out loud. Ugo will will swoop down and land uh, next to her. Okay. Nice. Epic. Yeah, Fahima's going to investigate the door and see if this is something that we can pass through. Okay. Now that it's been... Uh, hmm, well, activated. if you, you're walking over to it, you see that it looks like you could walk right through it. If you'd like to make an investigation check, you're welcome to do that. Yeah, but, I'll do uh, that. What are you looking for in particular? Um, I'm I'm doing my due diligence of uh, being best friends with Siv, and I'm checking for traps. Okay. And our, our magical traps. Okay, uh, roll an investigation check. You have advantage from Fallstar. Thank you, Fallstar. Jeff, I'd All like right. to go over to one of these floating squiggle thingies sure. uh, and and check it out. Yeah, okay. same. Same. I'll, I'll head up to, to this one over near that's closest to me. Okay. It, first of all, uh, Afima, what is your roll? 25. 25. Okay, so you, uh, you are fairly confident that there are no traps uh, in this passageway. Uh, and looking through it, it looks like it leads much farther down. It, in fact, farther than your eyes can see. It's a pathway that leads quite a ways forward. Just a nondescript passageway that is illuminated. Yeah, it's still uh, the same look and feel. Uh, very much stone and rock, uh, and it, you know, it, it, this this um, orifice here is illuminated, but it's not. There's no uh, additional illumination uh, as you walk through. Okay, so while the, the boys are investigating, uh, Fahima is going to uh, conjure some more elementals and I'll decide which one while you guys are doing that. Okay, so James and Siv, um, looking at the, these symbols hanging in the air, uh, walking up to them, it is clear that they are actually particulate matter. They are dust and bits of stone that are hanging in the air. They're sort of forming this pattern. Uh, you can literally yeah. Take your hand and wipe through them, and then they'll, you know, they'll be displaced and kind of reform into that, uh, almost like moving through smoke. But this is actual, you know, pebbles and dust and bits of stone. Jeff. Yeah. When they're doing that, L Lily wants to look. I moved myself on the map, but is that orb different color? The one uh, that yes, by? but it's not supposed to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's okay. nothing. Uh, there's nothing uh, particularly different about that than the other. Okay. Oh, weird. That was. <laughs> I thought eye, it was different. Katie. Yeah. <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh, before she actually, before she loses her concentration, she'll turn to Ugo and say, "Ugo, do you want to stay an eagle or?" <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. All right. All right. All right, Big Bud. Just a moment. <laughs> she cats him on the wing and she's gonna uh, she'll drop the concentration on polymorph before she casts uh she's gonna recast a, a a gargoyle seems fitting it's an earth elemental okay okay all i could think about was worms <laughs> i don't know why uh james will go around and copy copy the symbols that the, that are hanging it's just basically copying them into his into his book just wanting okay jeff uh can I go investigate all of these various chambers? Uh, and is there actual, like on the map, it looks like there's broken spears and stuff. Is there actual debris in the hallways, like remnants? There is, uh, and looking through it, it doesn't seem, to, you don't seem to find anything really of importance. Uh, it does look yeah. like there are things uh, broken and strewn about, um, but 
it, 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 it doesn't seem like there was actually a fight here or anything. It just does, it feels does like... Does any of the stuff... I get it. Uh, does any of the stuff... Um, look identifiable? In other words, like, figure out who built this place or who used to dwell here or if there's a religious significance, like what god, so to speak? Well, it certainly feels like a religious spot and everything you've seen on the way in contributes yeah. to that as well. Um, Ugo has identified a lot of this as having religious con context. Right. And I think that you, that's only reinforced by what you see now with the sort of symbols. The symbols, um, I mean, you can do a religion check if you'd like. Yeah, I'm I'm just trying to find stuff to bring back to the smart people and show it to them. <laughs> right. Like yeah. a Certainly dog not a or something. Certainly symbol that you would recognize <laughs> uh, from anything in particular. Okay. Uh, other than, you know, having seen it both on the, the map and on that stone on the way in. Okay, just... so nothing of note. Correct. Okay. Are the symbols, so Lily thought she saw a different color or but it was just an illusion. Um, but <laughs> the symbol on the wall there, is that, because it kind of looks like it could be a door, but it's not, right? It just is a, a solid wall? Correct. Behind it? Almost like yeah. an apse in a church. Yes, exactly. Like okay. a little, uh, little um, uh, what's the word? Um, vestibule. Vestibule. Yeah. All right. Great. Are we going down the dark hallway now? Or... Yeah, I th no, I think so. I think. And you said that there were footsteps, or or, or there were like tracks of of. It does seem like people have been through here recently. It does. Yes. This is a well traveled area. It is a well traveled area. Yes. But again, yeah, you, you, what you saw were sort of insectoid footprints and stuff like that. Right. All right. Jeff, at the entrance of that doorway that has just opened. Um, Besides the disturbance of dust, I imagine from an opening, mm -hmm. do there appear to be tracks that go in that down that hallway? I think it would be more of the same. You you, okay. you are seeing, you know, okay. yes, this has been well traveled, and yes, it looks like people went through here. Okay, cool, great. Yeah, that was more of like, did the well travel stop in this room, or did it continue? No, no, yeah, I, I think it's fairly clear that that you know this this was the this is the exit through which uh, footprints went. Perfect. When Lily gets to right there on the map, she's going to uh, call the USU to come with her. <laughs> that spell lasts for eight hours. I can keep it going. Okay. Dude. So. Do you do anything her. for yourself anymore? I mean, do you just have them like, <laughs> feed you? And whatnot? It's like, uh, it's like uh, Snow White in that scene where all the birds are like doing their <laughs> hair and stuff. Uh, that used to be how it is, but since the unionizing, it's gotten a yeah. little bit trickier yeah. yeah so yeah. they, they sure. won't carry you from place to place anymore they will just only during certain hours so. uh, <laughs> makes sense uh i'm gonna use my second win capability oh, start uh, you jeff so i heal a little bit <laughs> okay. just for game mechanics purposes oh uh, yeah maybe these so if this is the warden's domain i mean we've never really seen the home of any of the other wardens they've always been um in trouble when we've come across them before yes they've been no. notably outside of their comfort zone so who's to say that every other warden doesn't have a group of strange creatures worshiping them wherever they are or something i'm not sure right no. i guess it would be hard to lay low as a gigantic warden has he been here this entire time, or...? It's not that hard. We didn't see him or know they existed until recently. It's true. They've been hiding for a long time, so maybe they do all have their own but we, cults. We've heard many stories of them, you know, doing miraculous things, of them saving, yeah. you know... Was it the They're giant move? walking magic people! Of course they have followers! Good point. GWMP. Gargoyle is here. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, so right. you see the the gargoyle there on the map. If you you can move it, if you like. Uh, uh, Jedediah. Oh, oh, cute! This one this one's Jedediah. Okay. Well, yeah. you know you know that he will <laughs> probably. Everyone die. does. Everyone <laughs> does. Let's go. And yeah. she starts to walk through the door with her gargoyle, gargoyle trailing behind. Uh, okay. Uh, all of you walking through the door. I'll go so. follow. Can you yeah. give me a walking order, please? Uh, well, Fahima. <laughs> and then gargoyle. Okay. Fima me. Together. I'll go. We'll try to push past for Fima. If it's one by one, he'll try to. Uh, you mind Is if it I looks, take? Looks pretty up big. Front? 
Oh, uh, is it big? Is it more than? It's a room for two by two. Five feet? Is it two yeah, by two? Yeah, two by two would be okay. is, is fine. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll go. Well, well, you gotta shove sure. the you gotta shove the gargoyle. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Jedediah. Thank you. Uh, he just goes. Mm. You're made of stone, but I am stone incarnate. Silently, just. <laughs> All right. Just so uh, so Fahima gargoyle. Mm. I'll go. I'll follow that. I'll follow. I'll go. Uh, no, I'm going to be like next to Fahima. So Fahima okay. and I side by side. Gargoyle okay. behind me. Okay. <laughs> I'll and walk, then James? I'll walk next to the gargoyle. <laughs> All right. You're, you know, not the not, demon not and the gargoyle. Looking. No, I yeah. know. Yeah. It yeah. matches. Yep. Aw. Put yourself <laughs> on the map. <laughs> All right. So, no, that we are off this map now. We can oh, leave the. Okay. Uh, oh. If you're leaving through this door, mm -hmm. uh, we can leave off this map and. You start moving down uh, a long corridor. Again, this sensation of of a a very uh, noticeable quiet, a a conspicuous quiet uh, that it, you move through this space uh, that is uh, sort of almost like a tunnel uh, carved out of solid rock. Um, but again, there there seems to be symbols on the walls, more of the same of what you saw. In fact, there's some of the that circle with that sort of question mark inside of that paperclip looking symbol. And there are even drawings uh, on this on these walls of what look like ant like humanoid creatures, uh, insectoid creatures, um, bipedal ants that are, you know, sort of on this on this wall drawn on the wall mm. and you continue to walk farther and farther down it the the wall extends it, you get the sense that you are in so, this almost this this carved out tunnel almost like an ant farm if you've seen an ant farm mm. you know the, the way ants carve tunnels uh this one leading you down uh far 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 down it seems like you're going much deeper into the rock into the earth not so much uh elevation wise but just farther in from where you entered before we get too much deeper i do want to just declare that fahima has cast mage armor okay excellent uh and again it is it, it, you hear your footsteps on the the rock ground you know the kicking of dirt the crunching of stone underneath your boots but other than that it is eerily silent in there, not magically silent, just quiet. And as you keep moving farther and farther, eventually you see an opening that leads to a much larger chamber, a, a, a large portal that leads to a much, a vast opening inside this mountain inside this rock deep in the earth how long have we been walking 15 minutes maybe all right you you see through there there's a bit of light uh coming from there uh and again no sound in particular very quiet uh if you guys want to all roll me perception checks sure yeah um Siv, you have advantage from Z-Man 9018. Thank you, Fima, you have advantage from Gateway Guy. Thank you, James, Gator you Guy. have advantage from False Star. I'll go, you have advantage from False Star. Lily, you, you have False advantage Star. from False Star. I will guide myself as well. Gateway Guy! 19. I know Gateway Guy. <laughs> I know Gateway Guy. <laughs> you with advantage only a Rolling of... perception? Yeah. <gasps> yes. Oh, I rolled two fours. <laughs> oh, no. I rolled a two and a 20. Nice. Wow. All right. Yes. All right. So, uh, what did you roll, Lily? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. All right. Uh, Ugo, you were the first to notice it, but Lily and Siv, you also hear the sound of movement up ahead. Again, this quiet, this this heavy silence that you've been walking into, and then you hear just the. Very subtle, it, uh, uh, hard to perceive. Uh, uh, Fahima, you completely miss it. James, what was your role, James? 
<laughs> Eleven. Yeah, you you don't hear it either. It is a subtle sort of shifting, shuffling sound up through that opening into the wider chamber. Jeff, since I got an at twenty, is there anything I can determine more from just the shuffling? Like, is is it the shuffling of footsteps? Is it the shuffling of papers? Uh, uh, you, with a natural twenty, I yeah. would say you can you can <laughs> shuffling of papers. You open it, but you, it's the office. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, you never know. <laughs> Doug, we're uh, waiting uh, for you. <laughs> you. You just at a table looking at words. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. <laughs> the uh, no, you with a natural twenty, I will say that uh, Ugo, uh, you are able to make out both the, the the sort of movement of what you would classify as as walking or shuffling from some moving creature, and also something denser, harder, rougher, maybe even a crunching rolling of, of stone on stone. So I'll, I'll go without saying a word, makes the walking sound and sound, or sign, sign, not sound. Walking yeah, and sign. Lily uh, would have put her hand up too, like, a cautionary. I was playing Rochambeau with everybody. <laughs> Scissors, rock, walk, <laughs> rock, walk, and rock. <laughs> All right. Is the uh, sound getting louder as if it's coming towards us? No, not particularly. It just seems to be in that much larger chamber. And there's no light at all. There is a bit of light. Uh, in fact, I'll go with your natural 20, and I think the, the others of you, um, Siv and Lily, you also could probably perceive through this opening as you uh, you know slow down and, and listen and peer forward, you can see that the path forward kind of narrows a bit, and it seems to be uh, almost a, a stone bridge. Cool. I cast Shatter. <laughs> I was like, that, that bridge ain't gonna last long. <laughs> I give it 10 minutes. Really, we talked about your hatred of bridges. Come on. Sorry, don't trust them. Why aren't they on land? That's why there's no bridges in Bengal. It's just island separated. They have to use yeah. boats because there's just. Okay. It's actually not that far from the mainland. Like, there's easily be a bridge. You better yeah. swim. <laughs> um, okay. So we can tell there's a bridge, and but we. I'm gonna I'm gonna tap a go on the shoulder, and wow. then do this, and then crouch down and sneaky sneaky my way out there. The uh, that is the be quiet symbol for audio listeners. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So roll me a stealth check, Siv. You have advantage from Dire Nair. Thank you, Dire Nair. Ooh, good rolls. We also got a golden potato just now from Kitty Scritches. Oh, hey. Kitty! Thank you, Kitty Scritches. Wow. Thank you. 30. 30. Okay. All right. Uh, into that heavy silence, Siv naturally blends. And uh, <laughs> uh, why don't we actually go back to the map room shortly? Ooh. Okay. Different map. I'm still there. <laughs> I never left. <laughs> and <gasps> map room for life, baby. Epic. Whoa. Ooh. Civ. Okay. As you walk into this room. Oh, it's long. Uh, Very long. There is uh, what appears to be a long stone outcropping, a bridge that spans uh, quite a long chasm that seems to go quite deep uh, on either side of this stone bridge. Mm. At the far end of it, you, you see a stone creature, not unlike the one that you fought at the footprint. Right. A little smaller than that one, but of the same basic shape and make. Right. Uh, you also see a number of those insect creatures. They look like ants, almost, uh, standing on their hind legs uh, with antennae coming out of their heads. They even are wearing uh, clothes. They have robes uh, draped over themselves. And they appear to be standing on the far side of the bridge on a number of ledges and stone pedestals, outcroppings, sort of this, this geometry of this space. Uh, 
and they appear to be peering your direction. We're at the top of the map. Sorry, I'm. I'm so... You are at the bottom of the map. We're at the bottom, bottom of the map. Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, so. Oh, I there will we are. Sorry. Turn back around, and for the audio listeners, uh, Siv points at his eyes, and then he's going to point straight ahead and do this and then point straight ahead in a couple different directions and count out one two three four bad guys back to ago uh still crouching still hiding still trying to stay out of Ugo sight slowly pulls his maul from the back from his back uh, I would like to just watch the ant people briefly. What are they? What are they doing other than looking this direction? Is there an activity that they're doing, or are they just keeping watch? Roll perception. Uh, you have advantage from false star. Thank you, false star. Uh, twenty-two. It looks like the two closest to you seem to have stopped whatever they are doing and are peering back through the hole from which you just emerged uh, right. down that long tunnel as if they are uh, alerted to some movement there or or presence there mm -hmm. um, much 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 further uh, in you know past a, even a second stone bridge uh, toward the very back of this chamber there are a couple of others of them it's hard mm -hmm. to see what they are doing but they don't seem to be doing the same thing. They seem to be um, preoccupied with some other activity among themselves. Are the ant people armed? Yes, they are. Uh, insofar as, I mean, they, they, they seem to be carrying some implements. It doesn't look like, you know, a, a typical sword or club, but they do seem to have some sort of staff or stick or item in their hand. Uh, hmm. James will awaken mind to to everybody if, if we're all close enough. Are we sure we know that these aren't friends of the Storm Warden? I don't know if we should blast our way through there. You mean Quake Warden? Quake Warden, yes. Yeah. Fahima gives a thumbs up. Argo looks a little confused. I... I, I will try to get your attention when you talk inside my head again, so mm -hmm. I'll wave my hand again and mm -hmm. point straight ahead and then kind of smash my fist together but act like a big brute. Like I'll puff my chest out and make it look like there's a big a big guy at the end of the hallway. I feel like that would be something I could convey to you pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, okay. With an angry face, even though it's a stone face. <laughs> I'll go look back at you and makes the rock symbol? Yes. And looks at you questioningly? Yes. Thumbs up. <laughs> James, yeah, uh, James gives a wary thumbs up. The, the thinks he understands. Do, uh, does the rock does the rock guy have a face or is it just smooth? It's just it's just smooth. It's more like a it's just rock. I mean it's it's sort of a vaguely humanoid form, but right. he doesn't have a like a smiling face or a eyes or anything like that. Lily <laughs> hates that. That would be super creepy. <laughs> a giant earth elemental monster that's just got this like psychotic <laughs> creepy face. <laughs> It's just a rock with like a painted smile. There you go. <laughs> That's what Lily would do if she summoned elementals, is she would give them all faces. <laughs> Yikes. I'm going to give this guy a face pretty soon. Uh, and then I'm just going to kind of shrug, like, what do you guys want to do? And then I pull out two daggers and I'm just looking at Ugo and the rest of you. Fima's going to make a, a talking gesture with her hand at, uh, at the group. And then sort of a We question. could try. I'll, I'll um, awaken mine to Lily. Maybe maybe we should try to talk. Just to be clear, it's an open pit on either side of this bridge, right? So That's if something right. goes down and we fall off the bridge, it's a bad fall. Got it. That's right. That is okay. right. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear. Mm -hmm. That is right. Can I oh. see the bottom? <laughs> no, you cannot. <laughs> OK. Great. Siv is shaking his head, <laughs> doing the no talk. No Lily, talk. Lily's Daggers. gonna come up towards Siv. Uh, I will. Yeah, yeah, Lily moves forward. I will. I would say I'm backing Lily up. Yeah. Um, and then, did the yeah, this guy uh, just? Are you guys trying to not be seen when you move towards Siv? I'm. 
Lily's gonna like cautiously, slowly walk forward with her hands up in the air. Oh my god! Uh, all right, uh, okay. so you you are intending to be seen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as That's you what do, we're gonna do talk. As you do, he will send her gargoyle right behind her. Okay. Uh, you see the giant boulder creature, uh, just like the one that you fought at the at the footprint, mm-hmm. reach down and break off a piece of the ground and throw it at you. Now, Lily, oh! roll initiative. Okay. <clears throat> Doesn't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Siv, uh, straight roll. Fema, straight roll. Uh, James, advantage from a jar full of bees. Uggo, straight roll. Bees. Lily, straight roll. 22. For initiative? Yeah. yeah. I rolled a nat one. Ah, oh, you still get to add your uh, your bonus. That it. works well because you walked in with your hands up, so it's yeah. Not like I mean, had... it makes sense yeah. story wise that I would roll mm-hmm. that one because I probably ducked out of the way. So the rock goes flying at Lily. Thanks. Ah. Roll the two. So <laughs> misses you uh, because it doesn't want to fight. It <laughs> uh, but it uh, Siv, Siv, it is your turn. All right, well, game's on. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, bonus action, 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, let's Booming Blade this dude. Do some thunder damage. That seemed to work well the last time. Uh, you do have a straight roll as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Uh, 17 plus a bunch, uh, 27. Hits. Okay. <sighs> oh, man. 10, 20. It'll be James next after this. Yeah, okay. Uh, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Um... 29 plus 6, 35. Mm-hmm. 35 points of damage? Yep. Is it all thunder? No. Uh, thunder would be a 5. 5 of that is thunder. Okay. So 30, right. 30, sla- or 30 slashing or piercing and yeah. 5. Thunder. Well, some right, of that's so- ass to, to... Oh, okay, right. <laughs> it's a mix. It's a cocktail of damage. Nice. <laughs> All right, um, so uh, Siv runs up, his blades vibrating with uh, all of this kinetic energy, and he stabs at this this boulder, and it boom, it reverberates all the way through this incredible sound, breaking the silence of this room. And you see the ants, uh, these insects, react to that as the part of this boulder creature cracks. It seems very vulnerable to that kind of damage. Uh, James, it is your turn. Uh, I'd actually like to uh, continue moving and pivot oh. around the side of the creature as well. Okay. So I can get to there. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to use my racial ability. 5, 10, 15, 25, 30. Can I get up to there? Yeah. That's like an extra 5 feet to get up the, the ledge? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's my turn. Uh, and he is uh, encased in the Booming Blade Thunder as well. All right. If Mr. Stone Man decides to move on his turn. Great. Stone Man. Stone Man. That's weird because my brain went, Mr. Stone Man, <laughs> bring me a dream. Throw a rock at my head and make me go to sleep. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. It's going to be one of those games, folks. <laughs> That's good. I like that one. <laughs> James steps up and looking at the ants, uh, basically, eyes. Uh, if you can understand me, we are here to speak to the Quake Warden. We mean you and the Warden no harm. I suggest that we put down our arms and continue Oof. this peacefully. And I cast Mass Suggestion. Oh, now are they, they within range they yeah. the two of the front two are 60 oh, feet okay. okay 
Um, and the stone guy is, if, if he understands me, I doubt he does. Well, this one guy's at 70 feet from you. Are you going to be a little closer? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, okay, dang it. Hmm. That was 70. Okay. I'm just, where was I? I was back here to start. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. That's about as far as I can get. Okay. And then I want to make sure that I'm reading everything. It is within 60 feet. Well. Um, yeah, I'll try it. Okay. <laughs> but I, I'll try it. I mean, yeah. If it's, With these two, right? Yeah, with those two. Okay. Uh, all right. So I need to roll wisdom saves. Wisdom saves. And right. the suggestion is to put down your arms and we can continue this discussion peacefully. <clears throat> you uh, uh, don't have the disadvantage on say, uh, spells versus magic. You, it's normal roll. I'm not within 10 feet. Got it. All right. Wisdom. Need... And I have advantage from references needed, countered by references needed. They also need to understand me I, if they can. I don't. Uh, I yes. don't know that they do. Ooh, I rolled an eighteen. Ooh. That was for the. That was for the um, ant, and then for the stone dude. Can I have advantage from Idaho Judge? Straight advantage mm. for me. Mm. Oh, that's okay. I already rolled a twenty-one on the first roll. Jeez. Oh, yeah. It was worth a shot. That was worth yeah. a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not a twenty-one, but it was a natural eighteen. But I think that I was adding the wrong. I was in the it. wisdom of the guy. Yeah. The nope. wisdom of the other one is uh negative not five. as high. Much, much lower. Uh but I think it's I think it's still it's fine. It's uh would be a sixteen? That is what it needs to get. Yeah. Negative oh, two on wisdom. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> not a not a smart stone. Well, stone features ain't so wise. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, I tried. Uh, but I mean, you know, stone. I'm still sounding like a nice person, so I don't know if that helps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, is that complete your turn, Siv? I mean, uh, James. Yeah, if I see that it didn't work. Um, not much I can do with a bonus action. Uh, no. Okay. James is like, ooh. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so Ant's turn. Uh, the first one on the right is uh, going to cast. Oh. oh. Oh, it is, is it? We got some mages. Mage. Or, or possibly Mage. clerics because you said they were religious. Mm. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Could be clerics or druids. Good call. Mm hmm. <laughs> Or uh, all right, he's gonna cast. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna cast bones of the earth. That doesn't sound like a bard spell. Uh, Sounds okay. funny. <laughs> Up to six pillars of stone burst from burst from places on the ground that you can see with 120 feet, uh, five Ooh. feet and a height of 30. Oh. So um, there is going to be one directly underneath you, James. Okay. Uh, one directly underneath Lily. Can I try to spell seal that? Yeah, Ooh. if you have, that's a reaction. It is a reaction. I, I didn't see a range on it. It has a range of 120 feet. Or the range of, of, of your- Oh, it, um, it does. It's, it's 60 feet. Sorry, I didn't see that. So, oh, so you're gonna be out of range. Away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right, and one under Lagoo. Lagoo. Lily, remember you get plus two to your saves. Uh, Those are dope little pillars. <laughs> uh, how many do I get? I get six, so, so it's three. Uh, she says, because they're four, not underneath her. <laughs> they're about five. to be. <laughs> also sounds like a really good name for a product. Dope little pillars, bro. <laughs> okay, uh, the ground Okay, the ground where the pillar must be wide enough for the diameter. Uh, you can target the ground under a creature if that creature is medium or smaller. Each pillar... Uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, wow. Oh man! If a pillar hmm. is created under a creature, the creature must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. Okay, dexterity saving okay. throws. Ronnie so, said uh, plus two. Uh, you get plus so two from Lily, my... Ugo, and James. Um, James, you have advantage from Marie 
a listopad. Thank you, Marie Listopad. And the other uh, okay. of you have a all straight right. roll. All right, all right, all Aww. right, all right. Does anyone get uh, Golden Child Child vibes from this? Remember the movie, The Golden <laughs> oh, Child? Oh, that's a great movie. It's been a minute. Yeah. 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 Sixteen. I, I, I want the knife. You said dexterity, yes? <laughs> yeah. Sixteen. That saves. I only got a twelve. That does not save. I got a five. Oh that boy! That also does not save. Okay. Woof. So, uh, the creature must succeed on dexterity saving throw or be lifted by the p pillar. Creature can choose to fail the save. Uh, bum, 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 bum. All right. So, uh, uh, James is the only one that, that made the save. Is that right? Correct. I got it. Okay. So, way. Lily and Uggo, what happens is the very stone upon which you're standing starts to shake and rise this pillar building up 30 feet high three stories up you're on this five foot wide <laughs> pillar and you're you know hanging out really high up above this stone bridge that overhangs this massive cav chasm and each of you looking out over seeing this this huge fall uh oh. and you're kind of you know stranded up there how uh, high is it? 30, 30 feet. feet. Okay. The 30 feet uh, is the pillar on top of the bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, what is the range on Featherfall? Uh, and... James, you see uh, one uh, uh, kind of try to come up right underneath you just as you step out of the way. It, it comes up right behind you. Whoa. And then three come up uh, in front of you. Um, those will be difficult terrain if you try to get past them. Got it. Um... And that's the first ant. The second ant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, how many feet tall did you say that the columns 30, were? 30. 30. 30. Okay. Uh, uh, the second ant oh, is boy. going to uh, cast spike growth. Oh, oh no. Oh, I, know, I know that spell. That's not fun. Uh, so that um, appears. Uh, 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 is it like right. emotional growth? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Here. Right. So you see a 20 foot radius oh. uh, spikes, this, this stone spikes come up out of the crate, creating wow. this uh, very perilous section of the bridge right in front of you. Oh man. Radi radius or diameter? It says radius. So, I mean, this is then actually- it would be double what you have on the map. Yeah, way bigger actually than you that You would just cover the whole bridge. Yeah. Dang. Whoa. Oh, man. What the? They really don't want us to come through. Spike growth is a great spell. <laughs> I'm I'm personally proud of Jeff for using it again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Finally, I get your approval. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so that is the these two ants' turns. The other two ants are uh, holding their actions as uh, waiting for anybody to get closer to them. Uh, I'll go, you're up. <laughs> Jeff earned Jared's approval on the day Jeff killed us all. <laughs> uh, and you're correct. Took. I could have done that way earlier. <laughs> I'll go is up 30 feet in the air. Um... That's right. And I'll go down. So you're standing on this, this pillar 30 feet in the air on a bridge that's even higher up uh, over this gaping chasm. And directly in front of you, about 10 feet in front of you, the this bridge itself has sprouted these spikes these stone sharp stone spikes that have just erupted out of the bridge itself uh Ugo is gonna look at lily and says i hope you have a way to get us out of here uh and looks at the stone creature um standing in the way and casts uh bolt of the family <laughs> uh, and he will mumble um, James's name. Oh, nice. Which uh, turns, uh, excuse me, I believe it's Sim actually. It One of them turns into thunder. Uh, I believe it's James. Uh, it is. Okay, so that is just like Guiding Bolt, so I need to make an attack roll. All right. You have a straight roll as far as I'm concerned. Oh, no, I take that back. You have advantage from Ooh. Idaho Judd. Ooh, yeah. Thank you, Idaho Judd. Okay. Um, 18 plus 5, so 23. Yeah. Uh, and that is... You're shooting at the stone dude? Thunder. Yep. Yep. 4d6 thunder. Oof. 
Ooh, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, wee. Uh, 14 thunder damage. All right. So you see that bolt of, of pure sound and energy vibrate and shoot forward and land squarely into this boulder creature vibrating the rock separating it at the seams the two the the boulders that have cobbled together to create this creature separating and it seems that it has done much more damage than you would anticipate nice uh i will man jumping down is gonna either make a check or i'm gonna take damage right right um, especially under the spikes are you under the spikes right now uh no i'm not under the spikes oh even if i jump down there won't be spikes there but uh, uh, that is the next issue and the next problem um hmm. yeah i think uggo is going to use his bonus action um to try to get down okay in what way um um and movement I guess, but... could you koala it uh yeah i was kind of you like... mean look really adorable and hope someone picks you up <laughs> uh no i was thinking like grappling hook on the on the top of it and kind of like uh, using yeah. that to get down to Propel. the bottom yeah. uh i haven't used any of my movement and have bonus action but that might require an action and i would understand it yeah, I think maybe using your grappling hook would probably be cool. an action. Then I will just, yeah, then I'll just stay here. Okay. Uh, and just stay on the... I mean, you can use your movement to try to go down, but I think if you're using the grappling hook, I think we're in action territory. Uh, okay. Ron, does your homebrewed bolt do the guiding uh, bolt? Yes, it's just like guiding bolt, but I get flavors from the family. Yeah. So we each get the advantage. So whoever attacks Attack the stone creature next, next yeah. has, has advantage. Yep. It's just the next attack. Right. Yep. Yeah. Whatever the next one is. Advantage of the attack. Cool, cool. Yeah. cool. Thank Take you. it. Yep. All right, that completes your turn. I'll go up to Fahima and then Lily. Okay, so um, I want to just get clear on the distances and line of sight and everything. So how far away is the further ant creature from the elemental? I'm I'm having a hard time drawing it out. Further of the front two? 35 feet to that one, 30 feet to that one, and and then there's two that are way far. That are way far away, okay. Um, And so I can't see the creature from where I'm standing because of these pillars, right? Uh, I mean, you could you have line of sight to to, I think you have line of sight to both of them, yeah. Oh, but actually, not the just, elemental. Uh, the elemental would be behind the pillars, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're not mm. on top of a pillar, yeah, like Lego was. Okay. Um. Remember, if you cast this, I have the ability. I took it this morning since I had mentioned you in the in the in um, candles. If you cast a concentration spell, I can take that from you for a number of rounds. You can take it from me? What do you mean? Yes. It's one of the abilities. Hold the concentration. Cast, I can hold the you. concentration for you. She's oh. already got a gargoyle out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just reminding her that that's available. To no, yeah, I damage. didn't remember that, so thank yeah. you. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm, okay. Just keep so, <clears throat> all right, what we're going to do is... My gargoyle has 60 feet fly speed, so what I would like to do is have him use his action to dash, but what I'll do first is Fahima will get up on his back, (laughs) and he will carry me uh, uh, over here, let's five, what was that, five, ten, we'll call it 15 feet because he's flying up, maybe 20, so that she can see the Mm -hmm. elemental. Okay. Does that work? Or does, that. She, does she need to go 30 feet up? Uh, I mean, I think you'd have to go 30 feet up if you're going to see over the pillars, yeah. Okay, so that uses 30... 45 feet, 15 and 30. Uh, 45 feet, okay. Yeah, so she'll she'll go... <sighs> okay. Let's try this again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she'll cast... She'll, she'll try to cast Disintegrate again on this Ooh, element. Oh, amazing. <laughs> okay. What's, I want to see this damage. What's the it's save dex, on that? It's a deck save. Deck save. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the Make elemental. Come on, come which on. is real slow. Yeah. Come no, on. it has a negative one to dex. Come on. Uh, come on. I have a straight roll. So here come we go. Come on. Oh, that's a popped out of the box. <laughs> 
I got a nine. Yes! Oh. Yes! Eight. Yay! It works! <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you can describe it, but he must uh, very excited that it works. Um, okay, so that's uh, 10d6 plus 40 force. Plus 40. Force um, damage? Correct. Yes. And yeah. it's vulnerable to force damage. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why she wants to cast it. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Five, six, yep. seven, eight. Okay, so I have eight d6s here. <clears throat> All right. I mean, does she even need to roll? I mean, I, 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 we, need to need to roll. we need to Absolutely. know. We need to know. Absolutely needs to roll. So 10. It's at least 80. Uh, I rolled pretty low, actually. Okay, 10, that's good. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 24. Oh, shoot, dropped a die. Uh, 27 plus 6. Six, uh, 33. So 33. So 73 and or 146 points of damage. <laughs> if that's if it survives and it's a huge creature, 10 foot cube of it just <laughs> it gets, yeah. it gets yeah. applause yeah. if it survives. And Fima's on this gargoyle's back as she's like, come on, <laughs> come on, baby. Right, so 146 points of force damage if it's if it's vulnerable. Yeah. Oh man, I need a, I need a, I need a calculator. Uh, just it becomes just a wee little stone oh my Actually, gosh yes so you absolutely see uh, uh what happens is the gargoyle starts moving forward and fahima runs up and grabs onto its back as it flies up high 30 feet up in the air ago and lily standing on these perilous pillars you see uh fahima come up to eye level uh, across the way from you just behind you and you see her mutter something under her breath and extend her arms out forward and then you see this rock monster that's been pummeled with sound energy and blasts from uh, from uh, a number of of your compatriots you see it stare at her and the rock itself starts to break and crack and disintegrate hardened stone turned to sand and dust as it melts before your eyes parts of it falling off and landing with a thud on the ground and you see it uh, go from this massive creature to uh, basically a tiny creature <laughs> oh. <laughs> he turned it into a pebble Little yeah. rock boy? Parts Little of it are completely broken and falling off. Um, so it's still oh. up, but it's just a bebe now? Yes. A bebe. You guys okay. have done 214 points of damage on this thing so far. Dude. Wow. Okay, yeah. so. Um, Level 12. <laughs> what, what is Gargoyle's name again, Ron? Uh, Jedediah. 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 Jedediah is going to drop Fahima back down, so that's another 30 feet. So that's, it's at 75 feet. Um, so it has 120 of dash. So it's 45 feet left. Um, two. And Fahima will kind of... Um, she's going to sidle up as much as she can to behind this column uh, to try to get out of direct line of sight of of at least one of the ant sure. casters. Um, yeah, so let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. What did I say? How many? 45? Uh, the gargoyle's flying. Is, is 30. That yeah, I'm going to say it can only go 30 feet because it probably has to go another 10 feet up again. Sure. To, uh, unless you can say go on a diagonal, but another 10, 10 feet again to uh, fly up above the, the spike growth. Yep. Is it only 10 feet high? How big is the spike growth? Uh, I mean, I think it's just the surface of the ground. So whatever okay. that, yeah. Yeah. And that's my did, turn. Did I take damage being in the being in the spike growth at the or when it You'll grew do, up? You will at the beginning of your turn. Got yeah. it, okay. I couldn't remember how it happened. And there's no save. You just right. take it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, if that completes your turn for Hema, mm -hmm. we're up to Lily. Lily, you stand precariously on this stone pillar that's uh, shot you up 30 feet into the sky. All right. Me and the USU are all there because they've been just taking along with me. <laughs> There's an invisible uh, <laughs> sea of servants hanging on to this, all sides of this thing. 
It's very heroic. Like, new like, union, like, union rules as we speak. <laughs> this is I'm what I'm like, like the minions. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, okay, I'm gonna look at a go, and that is a five. What would you say the jump would be from my pillar to Ugo's pillar? Five feet? Wow, that's a cool idea. Um, yeah, five feet. Which I think Lily could pretty easily do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I am going to... All right. Come on, boys. And then I'm going to get a little run start because I am pretty short and jump. And, and make uh, eye contact with Ugo, so hopefully he's prepared to kind of move out of the way or dodge right. me. Jump to Ugo's pillar. Okay. And I can move myself. Boop, boop. Nice. All right. So um, you're gonna need to roll me uh, either athletics or acrobatics, whichever you prefer. Okay. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna invoke the force oh, of evil no. right now, and oh, everybody. Oh. No. <laughs> Jeff wanted me to die. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Do we? Is it the natural roll or with her uh, her bonuses? Oh, good question. It's the natural roll. You're okay. guessing the natural d20 roll. And ten. And does she have advantage on it? Yeah. Does she have she advantage? Does not. Okay. She does not. Ten. And I'm gonna do uh, acrobatics just so I'm saying that ahead of time. Okay. You're smart, Jared. Uh, Eleven. What do we want here, Jeff? To we get want us going to be as not on the nose, but as close as possible. So on either away. direction. Oh, one away, away either direction. Direction. So if you if you are underneath it, if you are yeah. wrong by being below it, uh, it affects you on your next turn. Got if it. you are above it, it affects her on this turn. Okay, I got it. Uh, I'm going to say six. Mm -hmm. Jess. Jess. What am I doing? Pick a number between yes, one or yes, the roll. <laughs> Yes, Jessica, you're, play, you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's got high level Wait, wizard powers. Well. <laughs> this is what happens to high level spellcasters in between yeah. every turn. Look, you just spend 20 look, minutes looking at spells. Look, look at what I have in my hands. <laughs> um, okay, I'm guessing Lily's roll. Yeah, yes. don't pick 10, 11, or 6. 7. Okay, 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 go. Okay. okay. Come on, okay. 9. 13. Okay. Ooh. We had so 11. everybody's beneath it, right? Yes. Yes. So the farthest away was six. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the farthest away is six. Yeah. So between six and thirteen is seven. Yes. So Fahima, who you picked a six. I did. I no, did Ugo six. picked a six. Ugo, you will take a negative seven to your next D twenty roll. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Guess you're, guess you're not climbing down that pillar, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah. Don't, laughs> I might not be climbing move. down. <laughs> But the Don't good news is move. Lily Lily takes no takes no uh, negative yeah. effect. So right? I get my plus seven, so I get a dirty twenty. Ooh. Dirty twenty. Okay, so Lily, you uh, make eye contact with Ugo. You take a step forward and jump and land. Pop, 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 ah, almost a bits of rock and stone crumble off the side of the pillar and fall mm. down, hitting this edge of the stone bridge and then falling deep into the chasm. And you look over, but you stand balanced on this pedestal right next to Ugo. Both of you, your small size, his medium size, both can kind of hug onto this okay. five. And then I'm just gonna like hug Ugo as best I can and like breathe for a second because that's very scary what just uh, happened. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on, but I like this. And then uh, Dimension Doras. Oh, nice. nice. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Out of the room. Uh, yeah. five, yeah. five Please over there. Yes. Please <laughs> away from the chasm. <laughs> I'm trying to, oh wait, my map got messed up. Okay. Where did Lily and Ugo go? They just left. <laughs> kind of to the, honestly, to the top of, um, well. They can, noped out Can I there. see up here very well, Jeff? Uh, I mean, from where, from on your pillar 30 feet up, you have a pretty good view of the room, yeah. Yeah. So like, I think like I would go to like, feet, kind right? of the yeah. back of this little tent area, kind of like give us like a second of cover. Okay. If I can behind the two ant people that we can see. I'm guessing we can't really see the top ant people very well. Well, from where you land, you can. Yeah, absolutely you can. See now the, you can, the ones now, all the way at the top of the map? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from uh, where you dimension door into, they become very much uh, in Is your there view. anywhere within here that I would see would be kind of like a little nook? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to look for, is like a way we can dimension door into a place that wouldn't be like 
immediately. If not, it's fine. Well, I mean, you can sort of be here, but then you're close to to this guy, um, or you know, or, or around here. You could be around here as a nook, you know. Okay, I was thinking like behind this tent, but then I, I guess then I'm invisible to the, or that I'm visible to the other. Ron wants ones. you to go over there. Yes, Ron <laughs> wants you to go there very badly. Singing furiously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fine. So, so you want to stay where you are or go? Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. All so right. We're kind so kind of like in their little, we basically sit down at this campfire. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what and you act, see, casual. <laughs> act casual. <laughs> what you see, all of you, is Lily on this on this pedestal, take a, a leap forward, land, grab Uggo, and then they both boom, pop out of existence and appear far on the other side of this chasm. Uh, Ugo, you have the sensation of being yanked through uh, time and space. <laughs> well, not time, but I guess just space. <laughs> when uh, Lily lets go of the hug, Ugo goes, oh. <laughs> uh, Lily, does that complete your turn? I just say, I just say, ah, cool. <laughs> and, I always do. And then um, I'll have, as a bonus action, I'll ask the USU to start a campfire. <laughs> All right, start a campfire. <laughs> Set fire to the place. Okay. All right, it is the tiny stone's turn. Oh, uh, it, poor tiny stone. Yeah, it, uh, it, it was going to throw rocks at the people on the pillars, but there's no people on pillars anymore. <laughs> and it's Isn't a lot it? weaker than it was a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, yeah that too. Than it was. That too. Uh, how far are you guys? And I've got Too I've far. got cover from three big pillars in front. Yeah, of me. yeah, you've uh, you definitely do. Uh, and Siv, you're still hidden, right? Uh, well, he would know where I'm at because I stabbed him. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Okay, so he's gonna walk, he's gonna walk over <laughs> to you and just uh, try to hit you. Okay, he takes uh, eleven more thunder damage. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Oh, I was just like, oh, blade. blade. Booming Blade on Earth Elemental is peak D&D. &D. <laughs> eleven. That's 11 before being doubled? Correct. <laughs> just break <laughs> apart. He tries to move and just goes... Hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, 22. Oh, man. Yeah, it starts moving towards you. <laughs> it pops and breaks, and the sound reverberating through the uh, the cavern. Uh, 20 is 30. 22. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so this thing is almost completely dead. <laughs> it is a uh, crumbling, broken, uh, just pieces of rock that are still trying to roll toward you, trying to move toward you uh, and do their bidding, but it is uh, wow. it is quite weak at this point. It's still going to take a swing at you. Okay. Uh, I have a normal roll, um, but... Come here, you. Uh, that is only a 16 to hit. Does not hit. All right, it takes a weak swing at you. It can't do much more than that. Uh, all right. I mean, the fact that he's still moving after a disintegrate spell is impressive. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Big boy. Yeah. But what's that? What's that movie? Oh, it's like Sandman. You know, where he's like at the end, yeah. he's like, oh, he's like, right. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was harrowing. Yeah. Mr. Rockman. Uh, <laughs> hit me with a rock. Um, hit me right. with a rock and make me go sleep. I was hoping uh, that, he that would wasn't explode. even. That was all. The, all that damage was on the stone's turn, and now Siv, it is your turn. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am actually not going to attack Mr. Stone Man. I'm going to. Uh, Do I care about him getting an attack of opportunity on me is the question. No. Okay. Uh, thank you for answering that question. You're welcome. Uh, I'm going to grow in size to uh, be large. Can you uh, grow my token? Thank you. Uh, that's my bonus action. Then my move is going to be to go up here. That's just emasculating. We shrunk him down and then Siv grows bigger. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's like, hey, so, low blow. So That's he will get an attack of opportunity swing. on me. <laughs> Sorry, what? He will get an attack of opportunity on me because I did right. not disengage. I uh, rolled a three. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then I'll look down at Mr. Ant-Man and say, I hope you don't know how to fly. And then I'm going to shove him off of the ledge. Into the oh, pit. oh my goodness. All right. The show action. <laughs> I believe the shove action is a contest of strength. Is that right? 
Uh, it's yes. athletics. I'm athletics, and then you can use either athletics or acrobatics. And doesn't your growing ability give you advantage? Yeah. It does. Oh, boy. All right. So good. Well, I don't have advantage uh, or disadvantage, so I'm just going to try to do athletics. It's about to get Slightly yeeted. better. Oh, nat 20! Oh. oh! I also got a natural 20. Oh! <laughs> oh. oh. All right, Matt, roll off. Matt, roll yes. off. But, but wait, what's but what's okay. the additions? I have plus eight from athletics. I have plus three, but I would rather just have a Matt roll off. It's not <laughs> okay. That's fair. Yeah. All right. One, two, one, three. One dice or oh, two wait, dice? Wait. I'm gonna use my thing right now. Oh my good? god. Oh. <laughs> okay. Everybody guess this low. This is a good force of evil card, by the way. This is a really good one. Yeah. Everybody guess low. Wait, um, I pay attention? Well, we don't necessarily <laughs> want to guess low because you're yes, getting negative six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, um, are, we, are we playing a game right now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, eight. Eleven. Oh, okay. Um. I have advantage on this, you guys. Just so you know. Mm -hmm. But it's on your. The it, am I rolling one dice or two dice, Jeff? On the reroll. You're rolling two dice. You'll take the whatever the advantage result okay. is. Yeah. Okay. And what's the penalty if we guess higher? He guess. Has... Then he then loses the, the difference. Yeah. He loses the difference if it's higher. You lose the difference if it's lower. And you have advantage. You said, oh. Yeah, I have advantage. I already said 11. So I said 8. Yeah. So what did you say, Ron? Don't pick 11. anything below 8. Don't pick anything <laughs> below 8. Uh, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. Stay 13. <laughs> I don't know, 18's in my head. Okay. Oh, that's good. that could potentially mess up the but okay. 18 it is. Okay. <laughs> I got another natural 20. Oh! 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 Wow. But yes! that's good for old number eight over there. Yeah, that means. That's that minus means... 12 on my next D20 roll. <laughs> oh, no. I rolled, a, I rolled an 11, so it's yeah. shoved. Bye bye, Ant Man. <laughs> bye bye Ant Man. All right, so <laughs> and I shut Siv them with grows my enormously, <laughs> steps up on this uh, pedestal and just shoves this ant, and you hear it go make no noise whatsoever, just wow. fall. Yikes! That's morbid. Yikes! And it disappears out of sight. James watches. It is literally a silent fall. This ant. Falling, haunting. Because <gasps> it's a vow of silence. That's hardcore. Did we hear them speak <laughs> like when they? Death. Did we hear them speak when they cast? No. no. Oh. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. All, All right. right. So does that complete your turn? Uh, that was pretty rad, though. I gotta say. That was, uh, <laughs> five, beating ten, the force of evil on eight. the way. Pretty cool. Uh. Didn't beat it. No, it I'm gonna to start. Me. <laughs> I'm gonna start making my way over to that Ant Man, just <laughs> okay. staring daggers at him. An Ant Man who's looking how far he is from the ledge right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> James, your turn. Uh, okay, so I need to take spike damage. That's right. Which yeah. is, I think it's two d four. Yeah, I think it is two d four. And if check. you move every five feet, you move is another two d four. It's correct. Right. That spell sucks. Two d four for every five feet you travel. So All right, I'm not gonna walk. So the worst um, part is if we hadn't seen it cast, you can't tell it's there. Right. Mm. That's true. Oh man. Does Where's my d four? I lost yeah. my d four. Can somebody else roll that? You don't see it cast. Uh, yeah. I got it. Two d four. You don't see it cast. It's natural to the ground, so it looks natural. Oh. I swear. I swear. I rolled two ones. I swear. I. Believe I, you. I, <laughs> I, believe you. I believe. All right. Uh, okay. Cool. So I take two points of damage. Um, and you, I, you do see a gargoyle flapping your direction, just so you know. It's not necessarily coming to you, but it's there. Uh, okay. Uh, got it. Um, uh, yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> okay. So I, I take this personally, by the way. I did cut my foot on vacation, and now... <laughs> <laughs> too soon, too soon. James is taking foot damage. I, I'm not cool with this, Jeff. <laughs> take it personally um okay uh, so um i will see the gargoyle coming behind me 
and just make eye contact with Vahima, give her a thumbs up. Um, and then kind of peering in between the three pillars, throw three Eldritch Blasts at what remains of the stony guy. All right. Um, so first one will be, the first one will be negative 12. <laughs> okay, all right, nice. Which was a, a it actually is a seven. So yeah. yeah. Miss. Okay. Uh twenty-four hits and a thirteen. It a uh, miss. Come on. Five points of force damage. Oh man, this thing is so it's force. So oh, it's force is it's ten? Yes. Mm-hmm. Alright, you destroy it. <laughs> 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 the uh the eldritch blast uh oh you should have I tried it should have oh, do you, oh you moved forward uh, uh past the pillars is that what you I did I didn't no I did not move Well he cast through it I so yeah that would be I, a disadvantage Okay I was trying to aim through it but okay Um okay Well then well the first one would have missed anyway Yeah so if I can the, the yeah the two missed anyway, but the the twenty six maybe roll another d twenty and see if you can. The twenty four. So that was a sixteen. So yes, I, I will see. I rolled a seventeen. So All right. it, still, it still would have hit. All right. So you uh, cast through these pillars, the Eldritch blast uh, going between these two large stone pillars, and it slams right into this thing. The rock exploding as it impacts, uh, and this thing is toast. Um, so I'm not going to move because, ah, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, basically I will, uh, reach out towards Mr. Gargoyle, uh, uh Jedediah. <laughs> <All> <laughs> and that's, that's my turn. I'm not going to move and I, I'm not going to use the bonus action. All right. It is Ant's turn. It's kind of a poetic image to see this demon man reaching out for the hand of a gargoyle to <laughs> I know so right? nice so nice <laughs> I think that's a Leonardo da Vinci <laughs> all right so you see this ant start to burrow under the ground and it pops no. up there <gasps> and then it runs Runs, oops. Runs to there. Uh, I think it's actually going to dash and get to. Oh. Uh, I forgot to ask, Jeff. Do the pillars go away when the ant goes careening down into the pit, or is yeah, that think, non-concentration? I think. Bones of the earth. Bones of the earth. What does it say? I mean, the ant probably hasn't hit the bottom yet, so it might still be <laughs> <laughs> still wow. alive. Wow, it's so, Lily. It's so wow. It's that. true. <laughs> super, super dark. It's also, not ants a, are very light. It's not a concentration spell. <laughs> oh, all right. They're, they're wow. there to stay. Yeah, that's right. Wow. They have uh, they have hit points instead. Yeah. Dang, cool. Crazy. Cool uh, spell. Yeah. Build a whole right. fort. So this guy... <laughs> Good lord, how much movement do they have? He's got I mean, a burrow and a move and, he, and a dash. Mm-hmm. So he's going to take the dash action and just run to there. Uh, the other two, though, can do something. So oh, great. Um, <laughs> there is going to be... <laughs> Jessica, you look on that one. What's it got? <laughs> wow, I moved on, um, almost 120 feet. Good lord. Uh, 30, 30, uh, 30, 40, 40 is what it would do. No. Yeah, 120. 110. 110. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. 120 feet. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like when Jeff sounds happy like that. Okay. So each of them <laughs> is going to cast Erupting Earth. Uh, one of them will cast it... Oops. Uh, there? Whoa. And the other one. Oh! We'll cast uh. it. There. Whoa! Are we all gonna die? <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, Dexterity saving throws for the three of you guys. Uh, Siv, you have advantage from old Logan. 
Oh, and uh, you. Lily, you have advantage from Liam Draws. Oh, Liam Draws! Thank you, Liam! We love Liam Draws. Dex? It's a Dex. dirty 20. All right. Okay. Refresh our memory what happens with Erupting Earth? 3D12. Bludgeoning. But does it? Oh. So, so the Earth just goes. Poof. Yeah, mm -hmm. a fountain of churned Earth and stone erupts in a twenty-foot cube centered on that point. Um, additionally, the ground that area becomes difficult terrain and uh, until cleared. Yikes! Um, I got a twenty-one on my save. All right. Uh, or you get you get plus two, uh, um, Lily. Twenty-three. Do you have to take your negatives on this one, Ron? Yeah, I did. I did. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I rolled a 16. I add 3, I subtract 6. So that would be a 13. Uh, okay, so you're the only one that doesn't save, Ron. <laughs> Great. Uh, <laughs> so you guys take uh, um, uh, 14 points of bludgeoning or 7. Oh. Or nothing. Ron takes 14. I take 14, yeah. Yeah, Katie takes, Katie takes, takes 7. seven. Civi takes nothing. Uh, and these guys, after they cast that, is that, is that a concentration? Um, these guys will also move back. Boop. And boop. Boop and boop. Oh. All right. Those little twerps. They <laughs> suck. Okay. Uh, all right. So that completes the ant's turn. I'll go, you're up, then Fahima Lily. Uh, I'll go looks at Lily and says, um, they're really good at running from me. And casts a bless. Uh, Jeff, how far is Siv? Before uh -huh. I say I actually cast bless. 35 feet. Well, actually 30 feet. 30 feet. Okay. So he yeah. can be. Okay. So I cast bless Sweet. one to, uh, me, one to, or one to, I'll go one to Lily and one to, um, Siv. Siv. Cool. I like a D4. Uh, yeah, it's a D4 to saving throws and attack rolls, uh, Lily. Um, hey, I want to tell you guys we got a potato. Yay! Yay. From Yay. Old Logan. Thank you, Old Logan. Thank you, Old Logan. Logan. Team Force of Good crushing it right now. 82% yeah. to 18% for Team Force of Evil. Wow. Feels good. Um, I can't cast a second spell, even though it's a bonus action. So I will... Uh, um... I'll go, well, hmm. I'll go, well, ooh, Jeff. Yes. I already cast my action, though, so I'll, I'll, that's it. That's my turn. Okay. You're not going to move? Uh, I, he, I'll go looks expectingly at Lily. Uh, they're way too far from me. Uh, I, I mean, does, uh, Lily, will you get us over there, or should I go run? What? Well, I think we're going to have to run. Okay, I'll run then. Yeah. Um, so the Jeff? you're in difficult terrain right now. Yeah, right. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, bonus action, aggressive. 5, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Wow. Yeah. That's it. That's okay. It for me. Pima, your turn. There's no one in between me and Ugo. Just double checking. There are no bad guys in between you and Ugo, that's correct. There's okay. Just just, oh. just me and the gargoyle and a bunch of pillars. Oh, no, I meant like in the turn order. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no, there's no. Uh, okay. There, no, there is not. Can you please tell me how far away Fahima is from the the ant creatures? Far. Yeah, yeah over 200 feet. Can you tell me exactly how many? <laughs> oh, she's... <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. 235 feet. <laughs> oh no, the nearest one, sorry, is 200. No, uh, the farthest, the farthest ones are good. <laughs> oh no. The farthest oh, ones are good. <laughs> 135 feet. Um, oh, I think I know what's about to happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fahima is like, um, you know, she can barely see these creatures at this point. She, she kind of rolls her shoulders back and says, you have to get the casters first. <laughs> Chicken, get under my cloak. 
And she uh, pulls Meepin, and she's going to use her distant spell, um, spend a point. I think I only need one. I'm going to double check on that. Um, yep, one sorcery yeah. point. Yeah, distant spell is only one. I'm going to double the range of Thunderbolt Jump. Oh! Wow. Which is 120 feet. All right. So I'm going to Thunderbolt Jump 240 feet oh, to the middle girl. of the furthest two mages and Amazing. do some lightning damage. So right here, yeah? Where this ping is? Oh, man. Dang. Um, Yeah. Yeah, might as well just go right between well, them. Now we That's have to hurry. Cause... <laughs> 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 All right. So this incredible crack of thunder and lightning. You see uh, those of you standing on this erupting earth, the ground just churning and roiling underneath you. Uh, it's difficult to train. It's hard to stand up. It's almost like a. Uh, it's almost like the ground itself is unstable and. Uh, as you're standing there trying to keep your feet, Lily and Siv, who's enormous, you see a lightning bolt pass between you, shooting across this massive span all the way forward, landing there, Fahima. They t they do rolls, yes? They do... Dexterity yeah. saving throws. All right. Uh, straight James. rolls for me, I believe. James turns back to look at Fahima. like, Fahima, what was that? Where did she... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's probably not going to do it. Uh, uh, 12 and 15 are what I rolled. Uh, those do not save. <clears throat> All right. Um, so I rolled 33 lightning damage. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Zap. All right. Zip zaps up. So uh, <laughs> you land there, whoosh, and and this incredible kinetic explosion of all this bolts of electricity shooting out and into these bugs like a bug zapper, and then, you, know, you can you see them shake and shimmer. Their their uh, their robes crackling and standing on end. Their little antennas shooting out <laughs> on top of their heads. Uh, that complete your turn, Fahima. What about the gargoyle? The gargoyle still has movement. Thank you. Ooh, uh, yeah. So, and, ooh, I'm going to keep him flying close to the ground in case Fahima loses her concentration next turn. Um, so gargoyle has seen James motion to him uh, and is going to swoop down 5, 10, 15 uh, to get him, probably 20 to get him. And then he will dash with James. Nice. <laughs> uh, so another hundred feet. Can you show me where that would be, Jeff? A hundred feet straight. Great. Yes, yeah, so we end up pretty close to Ugga. Great. Do you want me to? I mean, if getting on to get getting onto the thing. I mean, I I find taking another two d four of spike damage or whatever, Jeff. I mean, yeah, but yeah, let's do that. Okay, you can roll it. Five points of, okay. of piercing damage on my feet. <laughs> Not cool. Oh, actually, let's let's back up like, let's back up five because I need to uh, fly up a little bit. I can't be. I mean, I guess you can fly across the ground, but probably okay. wouldn't. Nice. All flying, right, flying over the erupting earth, waving at <laughs> Lily. <laughs> All right, so Lily, that's your turn. Yeah, I mean, I need to get out of this terrain situation here. So I am going to... So this is rough train, right? So it's half speed? Yeah, correct. Uh, I think I'm honestly just going to dash. Uh, so my movement barely gets me out of it. And then... I'm gonna dash. I think I'm. I make it to right behind Ugo. Cool. And that is my turn. Okay. Uh, so you would have taken. Oh no, that's just difficult turn. Yes. Okay. So Siv, your turn. 
top of the round. Uh, this is a game mechanics question, Jeff. Do you yeah. allow jumping out of difficult terrain, or do you quantify difficult terrain as regardless of if you're jumping or not? It doesn't matter. Um, I will allow you to jump out of it uh, if you take disadvantage on your uh, acrobatics check. Okay. Makes sense. And you have a straight roll as far as I'm concerned. Okay. But disadvantage, right? Correct. Uh... 27. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you leap out of it. No problem. <laughs> okay, so I want He's a like 10 foot tall cat, guys. Jump to here. <laughs> He's a 10 foot tall cat. <laughs> 10, yeah, the 15, ground shaking and moving 20, underneath you. It's unsteady, it's difficult, and you just 30. Boing, you just leap off of it <laughs> and land then safely bonus on action. the other side. 5, 10. Can I squeeze through here? Yep. 15, 20, Giant 20, 25, bus size 30. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will be pulling out my bow while I'm okay. doing all of that, knocking an arrow, and then I I will fire at the ant. Can I shoot one of the two ant men on either side of Fahima? Yeah. Can, I, can I see them? Yes. Okay, great. Then I will shoot my bow at either one of them because then I get advantage and I can do sneak attack. I wonder great. if Uggo could jump on Siv's back and Lily could be in Uggo's saddle and then we could have achieved our final form. <laughs> <laughs> Voltron of the heroes of We could Voltron just have Dingle. a warlock on one arm and a wizard yeah. on the other and we're good. Yeah. And I'll like be it. the head. <laughs> uh, 24 to hit. It hits. Uh, I'll shoot the, the one that has the helmet in the picture. Okay. Well, uh... I hate helmets. Uh, <laughs> My worst enemies. 21, 22. Little did you know it's the helmet of arrow avoidance. <laughs> <laughs> no! 28 points of damage. Woo! Piercing. Magic All piercing. Right. Holy I cow. Damage when I get... Uh, this thing oh. is... Uh, I would like to kill you. If you see this sim... <laughs> Uh, pull out this massive bow as everything on his person has grown in size with him. He pulls it back. Although I love the idea of just using a tiny bow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Two ticks off. <laughs> and it pulls it back and sends this arrow flying, and it hits the the ant square in the thorax. And it's uh, you see it spewing out green blood. Ooh. It is uh, soiling the robes that it wears. Uh, and it, it it seems to collapse a little bit, but uh, still hanging on to life. I see what you did there, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is the ant's turn. Uh, unless, oh no, sorry, it's James's turn. Unless that unless you want to do something else. Uh, no, that's everything. Move, bonus action, action. Um, okay. what is my range? I'm on the back of the gargoyle. What is my range to the the ants next to Fima? Okay. 95 to them, 70 to the nearer one. Um, yeah, I'm worried about Fahima being surrounded by them, though. So um, <laughs> from from the back of, of Jedediah, uh, James, <laughs> charge! <laughs> and three more Eldritch Blasts. Um, <laughs> uh, two, we'll do, yeah, uh, we'll do two to the one on the left and one to the one on the right. Okay. The one on the left is the one most damaged, yes. It is. Yep. All straight rolls as far as I'm concerned. Okay, got it. Ugo will activate his uh, his um, ability of uh, brotherly knowledge as a reaction when warlock within thirty feet casts the eldritch blast. You cast the duplicate of that spell. Oh, goodness! Cool. Um, so uh, an eleven to hit, I assume misses. Yep. Um, but then a 22 to hit on the one on the left yep. and a 22 to hit on the one on the right. Those both hit. Okay. The one on the left takes eight points of force damage. The one on the right takes 10 points of force damage. That's All right. right. You see the one on the left, take it. Ah, he's already bleeding from where the arrow stuck and the Eldritch Blast hits him on the other side. It spins him around and it falls to the ground on the ground. Dead. Nice. Uh, Jeff, do I have any advantages on... I get two beams uh because i'm casting it at fifth at eighth level but that's two beams at fifth uh do i have advantage disadvantage you have advantage on the first from a marie listopad okay that's, that's all you got 
Uh, all right, so I will target uh, the one on the other side of Fahima. Yep. The first one is... You do have any benefits to your Eldritch Blast that gives attack bonus? Uh, just play. damage. Uh, it's, yeah, plus my Charisma modifier, so plus four. It's just damage. Okay, so Wait, have two. I used my... Uh, on me, you have, on you. No. you have no. I would like to do that on, on okay. one of those rolls. Okay. Ten. Um... You have advantage or, or no? Civ is consistent. I do have advantage on the first one. <laughs> 10. 12. Uh, hmm. 10, 12. Um, 11. <laughs> 13. <laughs> it was 15. Woo! Yay! So I get oh, I, so, I get it. I get negative, negative so five. Negative five. Negative five. Negative five. Wow. Negative what happens Rough. if you do guess it right again? He has to re-roll. Oh, okay. So it would've been bad. You're not trying to guess it right. Yeah. Okay. Woof. Okay, so with my attack bonus, that is a twenty to hit. That hits. Yeah. Uh, and you get damage on the attack. You get additional damage on the attack to your charisma modifier. Yeah. Plus four, so then, plus four for me, or, or whatever. Yeah, it's plus person. two for me. Okay. So I use my level benefits for that. Great. Um, so it takes, ooh, nice, 11 force damage. All right. Wait, then the so do beat... we see Ugo throw Eldritch Blast? That's yeah. a little disconcerting. <laughs> <laughs> they're yep. a different you color, see, I imagine. Uh, they are. They, instead of force, they're radiant. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Right. So uh, they're, but... they're not real Eldritch Blast. <laughs> they're, I mean, they look almost identical copies of his, except instead of glowing dark and dark, smoky, they are bright and... and uh, Cheery. Handily. This, <laughs> is, uh, this is your turn, Ron? What? Yeah. No, this is... Uh, it's on, no, no, it's a, it's a reaction. It's a reaction. Okay. He okay. Yeah. Uh, second attack is 21. It's... It's... Uh, and that takes... Uh, minimum damage. Uh, three, three radiant. Okay. So a total of what? 14. 14 radiant. Yeah. All right. I, and, and as the beams hit this, you see them sizzle a bit on the ant like someone holding a magnifying glass over an ant. Uh, and it, <laughs> uh, it looks very badly injured, um, but it is still up. That brings us to Fahima's turn, then Lily. Wait, I thought you said it wasn't your turn, Ron. It wasn't. Oh no, you're right. That was James's turn. Ant's turn. Uh, sorry, thank you. Yeah, um, it's confusing. I'm just, just I'm waiting with bated breath to see what this ant is going to do. To do so, it's going to hug it is you going and tell to... you that everything is all right. <laughs> it is going to cast Thunder Wave. Oh! So you need to make a Constitution saving throw. Have I already used my my thing on you? My no, I think force so. card. Uh -uh. No. All right. I would like you to do that. Now on your con save, oh, is she geez. is she at advantage for that? Um, not as or far as I'm advantage. Flat roll. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, Logan from Logan, you have advantage. Oh, Logan. Oh, thanks, Ooh, Logan. Logan. Is that your son? Ten. <laughs> I'd like to guess what Siv's gonna guess. <laughs> Nine. What have been called already? Nine and what? Did you Ten. have? A, did, people have been using the negatives that they've they've been accruing. Yes. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. right. yeah. I rolled a negative twelve on one of my elders. <laughs> okay. That's why I failed the. That's why I failed the saving throw against the disrupting Earth, erupting Earth. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, I will guess thirteen. I'll do eleven. Is that everyone? <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, at advantage, um, is my, is the number what I rolled or plus my modifier as well? No, it's what you rolled. 16. So who is the furthest so away? 10? Me. me. Oh, oh, furthest away. No. That's right, furthest away. Nine, yeah. so seven. Nine. Yeah. So you get a negative seven. On my next roll. On your next roll. I'll take it. <laughs> and Yikes. so now, do I add my plus yeah, two? Yeah, you, yeah. you do a regular con modifier. What, what was the roll? It was a... 16. It was, a, it was a 16 plus 2. Yeah. So, 18. so you save. Ah, <laughs> not pushed. No, nothing happens? Uh, you take, you take damage. half damage, but you're not pushed. Pushed is what I was wanting. Um, 
Can I spell steal this? Yeah, if you want to. If you have a, re a reaction left, yeah. Spell. Yeah, I mean, I should have a reaction left. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, spell steal is... It's, uh, well, let's see. Uh, no, that's all right. It's going to take me too long. Let's just take it. Okay, so you take eight points of thunder damage. Okay. I need a oh, no, sorry, save. sorry, half of that. Four points of thunder damage. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> How are you I'm looking? Not... Me? Yeah. You got really messed up by a stone last game, if memory serves. Uh. Okay. The. This thing is going to. Take a, a, a attack opportunity and just run through this door as fast as it can. Um, no, don't let it go. Actually, no, it doesn't need to take. It does, it's going to burrow. Mm. Burrow wouldn't take a. It just goes underneath the ground, right? It doesn't take attack of opportunity for burrows, right? Mm -hmm. no, Typically, no. those kind of abilities give you protection yeah. against. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right, so it's going to burrow out of sight. This one is going <gasps> to. No. Also, well, it's gonna split it up. It's gonna run to here. It's gonna burrow underneath and then ah. go through the door. Whoop, burrow underneath. All right, so they've run out of this room and all of you look around waiting to see if there is more danger, uh, but there seems to be a, a, a door that they have run through that leads out of this room. Hmm. Can we and chase it, after them? Yes, you can, after intermission, which is- uh, Yay! <laughs> to answer your but, question, James, I look I look pretty bad. I'm about, ha I'm about halfway okay. to Bloody. the baddest you've seen me look. Okay. <laughs> All right. So when we return from intermission, we will find out if they can chase them down or what this team would like to do next. Uh, we did get some balloons during that section from hey. uh, round, Random Bowser. Thank you, Random Bowser. <laughs> Three balloons. Uh, uh, Part of my taco. <laughs> I get to just guess which part. I know. I'm, I'm going to say <laughs> the sour cream. Mm. Uh, and then uh, AG McLeod. Uh, so it brings us to Team Force of Good, 82%. Team Force of Evil, 18%. Ooh. We'll be back right after a brief intermission. All right.
And we're back. Thank you for hanging out with us during intermission. All right. As we left off, the gang mm, had... Delicious ants. <laughs> had uh, at least frightened the ants enough that they fled into the next, or beyond the, the next door. So Was what it... would you guys like to do at this point? Are we still in initiative or no? No. You, uh, okay. the, the, the encounter, such as it is, it's over. There's unless no somebody, unless somebody stops me, Siv's just gonna run after him with a weapon out. He's just gonna chase him. Okay. Hey, hey, big guy, big guy, wait, hold what? on. What? Oh, are we going? What are we doing? They're um, going to warn the others. Can James check the body of the of the dead one that that was next to Fahima real fast? Sure. Um, you would like to roll an investigation check? Yes. All right. What, what kind of creatures is classified as? Uh, what do you mean? Is it a, a humanoid a beast? Oh, uh, it is. I believe it's a monstrosity, technically. Um, yep, monstrosity. Monstrosity. But that's a little weird in our game because, <laughs> you know, there wasn't a wizard that created this thing, you know. Right, right. So, uh, yes, yeah, J James is rushing up and kind of quickly rifling through its robes, <clears throat> I guess. All right, uh, you have advantage from old Logan, James. Thanks, old Logan. Um, pretty good. That is a 17. All right, so uh, uh, you find, strangely, in its pockets, bits of stone and rock. Uh, they don't seem to be much different than what's just lying around in here. Um, but that's what its pockets are full of. It was also holding some sort of uh, staff that seemed to be uh, crafted out of uh, a piece of debris or or wood. Um, but other than that, it, it, it really doesn't have much on its person. It seems to be fairly um, plain clothes. The, the robes are uh, not fancy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, burlap or some similar canvas-like material. Um, it seems to be relatively, um, you know, it's whatever the opposite of ostentatious is. You know, dressed down, mm -hmm. simple. Do you think we could take this with us? This creature, the corpse? I could possibly inhabit it later if we need to. Sort of bringing us in as prisoners or something. Throw it in the bag. I need healing. Okay. Okay. Uh, James, do you mind? Uh, yeah. All right. I'll put it in the <laughs> put it in the the bag of holding, I guess. <laughs> Lily will do a uh, cure wounds on Ugo just at second level. Okay. Is there anything uh, else in this area, Jeff? Two D eight. Two D eight. Not uh, particularly. Two I mean, it, it it is a very large chasm, as you saw, a cavern, I should say, uh, with chasms between it. But it it does seem to be um, a a place of um, movement and uh, occupancy. But it's it, it, you know just a casual perusal uh, leads you to believe that these creatures, whatever they are lead a relatively meager life, a relatively simple life. There is not much in here that is um, not, you know, completely utilitarian. There, you can find some jugs. Uh, there are, you know, uh, boxes here or there, but it, there's not really much of value and there certainly isn't, you know, much of note. Is there any food? Uh, I think you'd be able to find uh, morsels of food or or stores of food. Um, what do they eat? Mostly grubs and other kinds of smaller uh, hmm. insects, things you would find under the ground. Um, bits of, uh, um, you know, also vegetation that 
that they have uh, cobbled together, collected down here. Um, when the elemental was destroyed, was there any kind of reaction from the ants? Were they like... Yeah, they all started running. As you saw, okay. <laughs> they started okay. running right. away. Right. Yeah. And there's no like uh, tattoos or markings or anything on the corpse of the ant creature? No, but again, it you know, it, well, I guess you could tattoo a carapace, but it is, you know, it is truly an insect's body. It, right. it has that kind of hardened shell. James will take I, this. Go ahead. I was just saying, I don't know the details of tattooing if you could tattoo an ant, but maybe you can. Uh, uh, James is uh, using the chance to regain a third level spell slot with a pearl of power. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Is, Should we Lily, I'll go. Do you have any of that healing left for me? Oh, um, I, I can heal you. Come here. I Come also up. need more healing, and I could heal us, but I need 10 minutes. Well, well should we 10? just wait here for a little bit? I, I'm a little worried that they're going to come back in force, but I don't know if there's anything we can do about that now. Well, if it's a toss-up between another confrontation and possibly having more healing from Ogo, I think I'd rather wait the 10. Okay. We can right. also uh, ways to get Ogo off ground. Think about it. Uh, okay. okay. How how close do we need to, to stand to you, Ugo, for, for you, whatever you're going to do? Uh, in 30 feet. Oh, okay. So yeah. J James will set up basically like looking out towards the door, but staying within 30 feet of Ugo, like keeping an eye on the door. So if they're going to come rushing back. Okay. And I, I do want to say too that I don't, I didn't need to roll a concentration check because uh, FEMA doesn't have to anymore on conjurations. That's true. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. How long is Jedediah with us? An hour total. An hour, so nice. took us about fifteen to get in here. It's been another two minutes. <laughs> It'll be <laughs> ten fighting. after this. Right. It'll be ten after this. Right. Another ten. Uh, uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll go. That's uh, about half of his life right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sits down, it... closes his eyes, and begins to say a prayer. He's having a midlife crisis, Jedediah. <laughs> he likes it. He wants to buy a motorcycle. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> Wishes he had children about twenty minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take to attune to a magical item? It's a short rest. An right? hour, short hour. Yeah, short rest. Yeah. All right, then uh, Siv's just going to be messing Hello, Katie, with the belt. Don't you have an ability to... that allows us to take short rests in 10 minutes? Or am I making that up? Oh, yeah. Ooh. You're muted, oh, Katie. You're muted, Katie. <laughs> I keep... Um... <laughs> I'll tell you guys later. Boring. <laughs> um, I do. It costs a spell. Let me see if it is... Cat map, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it will cost you less spells and me less spells to heal them if we if we can get that. Yeah, you don't have to don't spend right. your spell slot on me to heal. But right. you can do that. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. I'm also. So it's either do... it's, it's either a one of my second level spell slots or whatever spell slot it is for you. No, that's fine. Um, I'll do that. It's I think it's a third level. Yeah. Nice. How, it. How, is it, how many people is it? I believe it's. Three, three willing creatures. Um, uh, I'll I'll just sit out. That's fine. I'll take it for sure. Even though James so, can't sleep, wait, we, we it's been a while since we've cast this. I it's a short rest. So I think you were able right. to still do it because right. you get the same short rest ability. Um, if you fall, three perfect. willing creatures fall unconscious for ten minutes. Right. And, oh, uh, that means I'll lose my gargoyle. Yes, yeah. might be worth a short rest though. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get a six you want level me to do it? back. Up to six levels, right? Yeah. Up to, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I also get my short rest channel divinity back, so that's great. <laughs> nice. Yeah. This is so worth it. Let's do it, team. <laughs> Let's do it. Jedediah, uh, you did great today. I want to <laughs> thank you, Lily. <laughs> 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 All right, you see uh, Jedediah crumble and dis disappear, and uh, the three of you who are uh, participating fall unconscious really as you, you tap their foreheads like a like a hypnotist <laughs> and they fall unconscious uh, and you wait for 10 minutes Siv and Lily uh, standing tensely <laughs> with their unconscious teammates uh, vulnerable. I was going to mess with the belt uh, during this. Go ahead Katie, what do you want to do? I have a question. I sure. want to do Inspiring Leader if we're doing this moment, which but it takes 10 minutes, and I'm not sure that will count if they're unconscious. Yeah, I don't think you'd be able yeah, to Yeah, they have to hear the inspiration. <laughs> but you can you normally can do, do it during a short rest. That's, that's why I was... 
maybe, but yeah. Okay. I can tell them what you said when they wake up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like one of those uh, learn by osmosis tapes that you play when you're sleeping. <laughs> I had the greatest dream where I'm awesome. Yeah, I don't understand she just why. whispers like ASMR style into each person's ear and they wake up feeling awesome. You make a joke, but I bet you that would be a great spell. It would be, yeah. ASMR aspiring leader. It's inspiring leader, but you have to whisper to them while they're sleeping. <laughs> hey, you're pretty great. You're so good. <laughs> uh, I'm it's good. Called, I'm it's called creepy friend. It's <laughs> yeah. Friend. <laughs> so Lily, Lily, and Siv stand there awkwardly as the three of us just face plant on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like to RP the fact that I'm trying to get used to this belt more. Uh, what What I'd like to do, Jeff, just to kind of play around with it, is. Yeah. I'd like to try to create a little stone man like the stone elementals that we've been fighting huh? and see if I can get it to move. Like, in other words, like a little animated stone statue. Mm. Okay. Uh, it takes uh, quite a bit of concentration to pull the rocks up and form them, cobble them together. You haven't been using the belt long, but... Uh, you manage to focus enough to get them, the, the rocks themselves to stack rather than deforming the terrain or shifting it. You're literally just moving rocks, bringing just bits of uh, detritus that you see lying around, literally rocks from the environment, cobbling them together, stacking them, form, forcing them to move under your control and then stacking them, cobbling them together, just like the stone creatures that you saw. Um, it is a much smaller version uh, than even the smaller one that you fought right. uh, in here. But uh, with the belt, it, you know, you are not able to move as you do it. You're having to stay uh, still and focus, but you can create some semblance of animation in this thing as it, you know, at one rock moves and another rock moves. And yeah, I'd, I'll place it in front of the door. Uh, that okay. we're about ready to go into, like a little guard or sentry. Okay. And then after I'm done with that, I'd like to... I saw Zhang Long use this belt to catapult himself into the air, right? Yes, yes. The next thing I would like to try out is that exact same thing where I'm moving Earth underneath me to create like a slingshot or a catapult or a wave uh, that I could either surf on or launch myself off of. Okay, uh, you stand there, um, the, concentrating on that movement, and the ground underneath you jerks forward, and you fly through the air. Roll me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, regular, straight, yep, straight roll. Regular. Mm -hmm. uh, dirty 20. All right, so you land on, on your feet. You look over toward the door, and the little robot, rock man that you had uh, come together collapses and falls. <laughs> but you did manage to sort of double your normal jump distance. Sweet. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing that until the 10 minutes is up. <laughs> unless okay. unless but, Lily is, like, wanting to talk or something. <laughs> Lily, do you want to roll perception? I uh, turn around to talk, and, and Siv is very, very uh, enamored <laughs> with the ground. I'm like, well... Never mind. It's, <laughs> I like it's how you guys, like, you kick these ants out of their house and then you're throwing a, a house party. You're just jumping <laughs> around, Whee! making big people, you know, it's, just, it's, it's a blast. Uh, I know. I mean, Lily doesn't have to maintain concentration on catnap, but would probably, like, keep an eye to make sure that there's no, like, danger coming from any of the other directions. Yeah, roll, just, roll perception. You have advantage from Nico sure. and Yukon. Nico okay. and Yukon. Uh, 24. All right. I also want to mention that we got a balloon from a user by the name of The Rest of the Taco. <laughs> Which is this is getting brilliant. confusing. <laughs> now uh, I'm sorry, tacos. you said 24. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Taco uh, yeah. okay so uh, you stare. I mean, you, you, you're keeping a good eye on the door, and there doesn't seem to be anything coming through during this 10 minutes, much to your relief. Okay. Uh, the three of you come back to consciousness feeling rested uh you know in a, in a in a manner that is much 
greater than just the 10 minutes that you slept. And as you come to, you see Siv being leap, uh, launched through the air by this ground that is projecting up underneath him. Is he doing that on purpose? Yes, I'm practicing. Oh, okay. How Boy. come when I did it, it was so slow? Well, it's still slow. I mean, the, the, this is sort of a jerky movement, but it is still, it, you know, it takes uh, a long time between castings and he's able to sort of push himself up uh, from underneath, but yeah. yeah it's I still, imagine uh, I'm also like leaping off of it. So it's yeah. not just the rock, it's also Siv springing off of the rock. It's an ollie. Why did nobody ever tell me we could do that with that thing? <laughs> I just saw uh, the vision of Zhang Lao Long do it and I figured why not? Right, 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 of course. Hmm. Yeah, because just what you need to do, jump further. <laughs> Lady of strengths, you know, sometimes it works. Yes. Why not okay. learn from the past, right? Of course. I will. Are we ready to go crush some bugs? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm ready. Yeah, I hope so. Is everyone feeling healed enough? I do need yes, to. Yes, I, I feel terrific. Thank you. Sit. Oh, yeah, I, you. I mean, I, I could use a little something. <laughs> If you if you don't mind. No, not at all. Uh, I'll do cure wounds on you at uh, second level, maybe. If you want to roll it, it's two d eight. Okay. Plus four. That's probably funny. All right, so the everybody's Thank moving you. through mm -hmm. this uh, this door into the next chamber. Well, there's a stone a stone guard that he created. No, it collapsed. Oh, it, it collapsed. collapsed. It collapsed. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. All right, yeah, I guess so. A small little pile of stones near the near the door that weren't there when you went to sleep. <laughs> but, um, okay. All right, so what order are we moving through the door? Well, at this point, they know we're here, and I'm expecting an ambush. So I, I think it would make sense to put me and Uggo up front because we can take a hit the best. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Uggo and Siv, then... I'll go. James and uh, Lily, yeah, then Fahima, Laura and Fahima and uh, Meep. Great. All right. So, uh, Siv and Ugo, you are the first uh, that move through this little opening, uh, this stone uh, entrance that you saw the <clears throat> ants escape through. And you move down a, a small corridor and you see up ahead more of that sort of dim green glow that was emanating from those orbs that you touched in the previous room, and that that same hue, that same uh, colored light uh, up ahead, and as you walk into that room, it seems there are a number of those glowing stones illuminating a a, a chamber that is uh, almost hexagonal. It, it, it has angled sides cut out of the rock, and those uh, all of those sides seem to be. Uh, have layered and have little holes all around them, like little uh, bored out tiny little tunnels that you would see maybe <coughs> move through, but there's just a, a whole number of them around the circumference of this, this room. And in the center of it, toward the back, uh, well, walking in, you see uh, both of the uh, ant creatures that had escaped from you. They are toward the back of the room. Both of them uh, clearly very injured and nursing wounds. There are other ants sort of clinging to the to the walls, moving even up to this on the sides of the walls a bit, in and out of those holes. The whole room has a bit of a writhing feel to it. Like there, are, there's a lot of uh, ingress and egress all through these little tunnels. Like it maybe is the center of a of a hive. Ooh. And in the center, in the back, you see a robed ant with a large <clears throat> thorax, large kind of bulbous back in big robes sitting on what looks like an elevated platform with a tall stone uh, crown? fixture on its head. It's not a crown so much. It's just a uh, sort of a uh, rock bonnet almost on its head, <laughs> you know, for lack of a better term. 
Rock and bottom. It, yeah, it, it's, its head is down, and it seems to be almost meditating, or in a meditative stance. There, the injured ants are nearby. Other ants seem to be moving slowly around it. And as you walk in, it looks up and all the ants in the room get tense and look and the rocks seem to shiver and shake as if uh, under their control in some way. The the very sides, the, the stone of the walls seems to almost vibrate. We oh, don't want you... to harm you anymore. You see that. No more larger, fighting. The larger ant in the center raise its head heavy with this laden with this stone fixture on its head and it looks up at you the room again quiet the air thick with that silence and it looks up with you with these segmented eyes insectoid its mandibles flexing its antennae peeking out from underneath that stone fixture and it looks at you and then it speaks James do you understand what it's saying no, but I don't... Doesn't sound like a language James has ever heard. Um, warden. We come for the warden. It looks up. The god, the god, it again to the gust to the cone. Yes, god, yes, god, the god underground, tall stone. I'll pick up a rock and point at it. I'll do a minor illusion. Mm hmm. I oh. dropped the rock as soon as Lily does that. <laughs> I think I never did it. Good idea, Siv. I'll do a minor illusion of the warden. Hmm. Yeah, the guess. Yeah, the gee, the god, the gin, the guess, the the guess. The guess. Jeff, it, I, I know I don't speak the language, but is there any kind of like, and they're alien too, but uh, Ugo is now expert in insight. Is there any mm -hmm. kind of insight that he can get from what yeah. this thing is saying to them? I mean, it's it's clear this thing is attempting to speak common. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you want to try an insight into its intentions, you can. Yeah, really that's check. that's really what I'm asking. Is sure. I got the idea that it was right. it was trying to speak common, but yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a straight roll as far as I'm concerned. Okay. <clears throat> Do I recognize it as Terran since my gargoyle speaks mm. that? It is not Terran. That would be a 22. Um, you have fought these things. And so it is, you know, it, you're not exactly getting warmth from this character, right. but it does, you, you do see that it is engaging with you in some discourse. It is, uh, the, the other ants in the room, the other insects in the room, uh, seem to be very on edge, agitated, defensive, uh, primed to defend this one. But this one seems abnormally calm and uh, still. Will it allow me to walk within 30 feet of it? Will it allow you? Mm -hmm. I'm walking hands up and I'm stepping forward. And I would like yeah, it, it, the, the, all, the other ants, uh, you know, the robed ants sort of move in front of, you know, between you and it, as it says, as it, as it, it closes its eyes. And as it does, the other ants step aside and allow you to move forward. 
I'm going to cast Detect Thoughts. Mm. And I'm going to use Awakened Mind. Awakened Mind is you can telepathically speak to any creature you can see within 30 feet if it understands at least one language. Okay. We come seeking the Quake Warden to protect it. There are others who would seek to weaken it or even destroy it. We mean you no harm. We apologize for the fighting. So this is all in his head. It is all in his head. Yeah. Detect thoughts would give you surface level thoughts. Right. If you, and basically, as so I will add, if you think your words, I should be able to understand you. So if it thinks its words, you hear it how? You hear it in your mind? As, through, detect, through detect thoughts, through detect basically. Through detect thoughts, yeah. yeah. So you get the this 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 thought uh, that uh, how would that come through? You you would um, you would get the a thought that you are trespassing here, uh, and that um, you have uh, it, it is. Um, it is offended that you have killed its uh, some of its acolytes, but it also there's a strange, almost respect and admiration for that. We come only because the circumstances are so dire, and we apologize for the uh, conflict. It was unnecessary and we hope to avoid it. With the ye, with the gersh, the gip, with the gag, the god, the gin, the gust, the gone. I'm sorry, I don't understand you. He the ye, the gasks for the gore, said the guy with the gints. With the ye, the gone, the gur, the get. Uh, the guy we are asking for something. It thinks we are asking for something. Okay. We can hear what he's saying out loud? Mm hmm. Okay. Silence. The god, the gin, the gust, the cone. And the gasks for the gore. So the guy The god asks for silence? The gin, the gext, the gange. The gis, the gow, the girf, the goes, the gin, the gus. Goes with us. The the girl with the hose is in in the ruts. <laughs> <laughs> the girl with the nose goes with us. Who's the girl? You. With a guy. With a guy. Did the goo? You the goo? With a gun to the goo? Spit the geek to the goo? The guy with the hose is in the ruts. I'm going to try speaking with shapes, and I would like to use the belt to create the stone warden and a little stone warden next to like where James is standing, even. Hmm. And then, uh, and then uh, a circle around it, and then right in front of it will be a bunch of little stone ant men. Mm -hmm. That way, anybody that is in the area can see it, and if they want to either draw or point or whatever so that it's more of a three-dimensional image that can be manipulated. In your head, James, you feel this question, this thought, this desire to know why. Why you wish to speak to the warden, to the god in the stone. I don't know. What is happening? What is it saying? If it's asking for a silence, it's going to be quite detrimental as I can't I can't cast anything without speaking. I think I James is talking yeah. to it in its head. So yeah. let's just give him oh, a moment. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Using awakened mind again. 
we've been besieged by the other wardens to seek out their comrade who they fear is in danger. We have been chosen to help them, help the gods, because there are others who would destroy them. The Inferno Warden himself has already fallen. With a gift, with a gift for the end. I look back at head, you. You feel like you, 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 the sensation that they have the responsibility to defend the wardens, but they have been overwhelmed by you. Have there been any others you've seen in this place? With a gun. Anyone? Sorry. With a gun, again, you have the sensation of a single person, single man. A man. Call My dad? Um, Lily, can you show, can you, can can you, you create can an create illusion Con of Conroy? And she does uh, create a facsimile of Conroy Tig, Fahima's father, small in her hand, an image shimmering there. Yeah, the guess. Yeah, I think that was yes. Ooh, okay. yeah, guess. Where? I point. I point at the Conrad image. Where? What happened to him? Is he here? Oh, with a gear. Give it ye. Hmm? For the guess, pet the gas. Not the guy, keep the goo. There is a sensation <laughs> in your mind. My that's the challenge. That's the I challenge. know, it's incredible. <laughs> and I, challenge. yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Keep, keep going. <clears throat> Can you repeat your what head. you just said, Jeff? Hmm? Can you repeat what you just said again? For the guess, peck it by the gas. Not the guy, keep the goo. And you get the sensation in your head that he has also trespassed here. Mm. Another god, I think, has for the god. Far. Not far. Not far. Well, he will. There's this, tension, this, this sense in your head, uh, the, the, the thoughts, the surface level thoughts of knowing that you are powerful, knowing that you have turned back uh, at every that you got farther than this other man that anyone else, farther than anyone else has. Mm -hmm. The goo, you the goo, are the gone, are the girl, are the game. He wants to know if you honor it, if you honor the God in the stone. Yes. Again, only awaken mine, I'm keeping silent. Yes. We seek only to protect them and help them protect Ein. And it is Kathakur. And it is Krathagakt. Or the Gok again. Hathagarmed. And you get the sensation that the the warden itself, there's concern for it. There should be. The ones that are coming for it are more powerful even than us. And you see it close its multifaceted eye, turn its head downward. And the ants change their defensive posture and move around you. The gay with the gill, bro the king, you the goo. To the goo, it the it. What's happening, James? Happen? I don't know. For the gall of the go. By the god be the gee with the air. Something of the air. Something of the god of the air. The god of the air. They bring you to the side.
side of the room. And these ants, these numerous ants, both inside and outside the room, start to burrow in the wall. Some of them magically deforming the wall itself. Others using their their hands, their appendages, burrowing out these tiny pinprick holes, these, these holes that the ants themselves can squeeze through so easily and burrow out, widening it. Go the gear. Go the go. Thank you. Thank you. And the ants surround you, swarm you, more of them coming in from behind, outside the wall, through the hole, the larger orifice that has now been uh, opened up into this hexagonal chamber, this this space, this center of this hive now opened up and out. It is much rougher. It's much less defined, carved. This areas that you've moved through have been austere, religious, formal. These, these are holes. These are, this is an ant farm, an ant hive, a uh, internal hole through the rock and stone, through the dirt itself. Dark, swarming, alive with ants all around on every side. They're letting uh, everybody come or is it just me? Everybody. Okay, good, good. All right, so yeah, I'm, I'm motioning for us to follow. Where are we going? Do we need to be silent? I think they're showing us. I think they're taking us to the warden. I think so too. But no vow of silence. Not yet, but I think they see it as respectful, so. Okay. Let's... So you're going to be our, the only person who can talk to him then? Uh, maybe. Jeff, I'd like to approach the queen or whatever she is. Mm -hmm. I don't have any weapons out, but I'm going to slowly approach her. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to reach into my pack and pull out a potion and hand it over to her. A health potion? Yeah. And then I'll gesture over to the two that we badly injured. One of which is in the same bag you just pulled the potion out of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does not move. She does not uh, take it from you but others do, and then bring it over to those, uh, and n no no uh, indication of, of what to do. They look at it, they look at you. And she, I gesture to drink. She raises her head, seems to be communicating with them in some way, and one of the injured ones holds it up to its face, and its mandibles go pry open the cork and <laughs> wow go inside the lip of the glass bottle as the tips back and you see some of its wounds begin to close up you the go or the gun or the girl the gus i know we will go with you. If you the guys to the gone. Something about the stone. And uh, I they... think she said he has the stone. <laughs> but I'm not sure. She said be as stone. Uh, and you <clears throat> move in this line, this parade, ants marching through this tunneled section it is dark those of you with dark vision acclimate to the experience but it is I'll keep a hand on i'll go uh, <laughs> there's meat meat that's burning too. yeah we got burning chicken yeah it is a march into the unknown the uh the ants give a wide berth to meat by the way <laughs> not, not fans of the fire Aww. um and uh distance. Eventually, as you move all these, more joining the parade, more joining, eventually you get to the lip of this entrance, the, the rock itself opening before you, them reforming it, 
burrowing out this deeper hole until they get to what looks like the entrance to another area in front of you and all of the ants stop at the edge, unwilling to go any farther. I point down. Warden? There's a, a solemn bow, all of them. It starts at the front and it, it moves back like dominoes. They all bow their heads low. So it's a ledge and then nothing? No, it's a it, it's an entrance. It's a you kind of go down a bit into a almost like a pit. Can we see down into the pit? You can. It looks like dirt and rock and stone. It looks more of the same. But it's just a a, a sort of a, a I don't know what the word would be, a gully, a pit in the center of this, you know, that it led into this area. A hole here where you'd been moving through solid rock and been shifting right. and morphing ahead of you, and now there's just this like this spot. How high is the chamber? Uh, not terribly high, maybe fifteen feet. Oh, okay. Do I see anything down in the pit or no? You do. You do not. All I'll, right, I'll start walking. Yeah, I'll start. we should have asked where Conroy was. We I did. We did. We said where. Mm. I don't think they know. Well, and even if the answer, we might not have interpreted it, cor interpreted it correctly. Right. Mm. I'm All just right, going to so start guys walk, crawling down into the pit. Yeah, start walking yeah. into the pit. <laughs> Everybody uh, uh, moves down, hops down into the pit. The ants behind you, unwilling to move. And as they all peer out, it's like a this mass of ant faces, all robed, all looking out this hole beyond. It's like they can't go past this demarcation line. But you've just hopped down into this area. They're all watching you, huddled together, pressed up against one another, ants atop, ants atop, ants. As that opening begins to close up. Uh, oh. uh. And then you can see no more ants. You are in this pit, this hole, this okay. pocket inside solid earth and ground. I'm going to take out a torch and light it. Thank you. And you. <laughs> the torch catches light. You see dirt on the walls. It's less stone here than it is earth. More like the interior of an anthill. If I get down to the lowest point, how is the earth feel? Much more solid there. Much more solid. Roll me a perception check. Okay. I mean, we also got meat casting a bunch of light, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, uh, straight roll for you, James. I'll guide myself. Ooh, yeah, 19. All right. There seems to be a crack in the floor. How big? Not terribly long, but there's definitely about four or five, maybe six inches of gap. Siv, maybe bring the belt over here. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe ant eater. What? Maybe insect eat under giant insect underground eat ants. I, well, I think... Who knows what's down here with the warden? It could be anything. I'm just saying, be careful. I have, I don't feel right. You no, think it's... there's something guarding the warden? Like another was... elemental? Yes. I don't. I don't think so. I just think be we're... careful. Just no, say, be careful. Don't course. you have a spell that tells us exactly where the warden is? Maybe we should be quiet. And you feel a rumble underfoot. James, standing over that crack, you look down 
and you see what appears to be a finger enormous underneath the ground deep in the crack um, awaken mind to everyone back up back up back up back up all right back up James you can see in this pit you can judge if the finger of a 100 foot tall being is under this crack. You could look as to where the head would be, it would be off in that direction. So what is moving? What's the rumble? That's unclear. The okay. ground beneath you is just rumbling. Okay. Do we need to get the amulet near its head again? Or touch it with the amulet? So yeah, start head yeah, start heading towards the head. So yes, I'll, I'll All direct right. direct us. So you walk you you turn toward the direction, you walk up what you think would be where the arm was, but now you no longer can see it because the crack stops. Mm -hmm. but you're trying to judge that 3d space underneath you the where it might be if you were, if there was a body under here and you walk forward and forward and there seems to be a small gap in the wall you'd have to squeeze through to keep going that direction i'll just use the belt to widen it you concentrate and the belt starts to shift the wall and it opens and allows you to walk farther forward and as it does as you feel that belt illuminate energize and move the earth around it the rumbling underfoot gets much more intense almost to the point where you have a hard time staying steady and you start moving farther forward up to where you would guess the top of this figure would be. It's a, it's a walk. And then you hear it. Oh, did you get that? It's kind of a long story. It's yours, isn't it? Zhang Lao Long. Yeah. I do not know. Of course you don't. I just want to rest. We need you to fight. The Inferno Warden has fallen. The Typhoon Warden. And the Storm Warden, they need your help. We need your help. Do you mean fallen? Dead. Killed what? by your enemies. Enemies of Ein. <laughs> and the whole room starts to shake. The, the area in front of you, right where you think the head would be, breaks and cracks and crumbles. Like a cave-in right there, underneath, like, a, like an earthquake happening, creating a large crevice. And you see, deep down below you, you see a stone dragonborn face. Huge, lying on its back underneath you. Dead. <sighs> yes. Slain by the Lord of Crows. 
with this, and I pull out the God Slayer blade. He died protecting the city of Turles. I just want quiet. I just want to be released from it all. Why can I not escape it? Because you swore an oath. Yeah. What? Escape what exactly? All of it. What I learned. What do you mean? I... The Dragonborn Queen. <sighs> she spoke of... One of the Wardens would, would, would retain the memories. Leifen... Led us all. Leifen. The Queen. She still uh, lives. She does. What? The Queen. She still lives. <laughs> Again, the rumble underneath. I think we found our something marvelous. Uh, I hate to be a bother, but we're also looking for a very important person by the name of Conroy Tig. I do not know that name. Your aunt friends seem to know something about them, and we can't really communicate with them well. I have buried myself here for a long time. I just could not. What happened to Mirasis Blue, the Typhoon Warden? She Where is she? The Typhoon Warden, Rilla. Oh, sorry. Yes, the Cyclone Warden. She. Told me. Told me what we had done. What we were to do. And I came here. did not believe her for so long because our duty was to protect but she could not handle the laws a child she a spoke of what we gave up she told me what she remembered and what burden still remained on her conscience. And I could not remember. I could not understand who we were. I was 
is only this thing. This sentinel existing for one purpose. Knowing that there was more before I just wanted to bury it all. Bury myself down deeper. Those things that you know, those things from the past, they are causing the troubles now. And no one else understands. There's a people called the Drow. Do you know of them? Underground. I worry what that may mean. It is not clear to me, but... They used to be Sky Children. The Cyclone spoke of who we were, who she was, and what we lost. She spoke of the atrocities. I do not wish to think of any of this. I wish to remain here, deep and away from the surface. Mr. Warden, sir, the world is going to suffer without your help. You have a great purpose. And I think that you would feel worse if you were to ignore that. I don't want to diminish all these feelings you're having because I'm sure that is a lot. But would you like to come with us to see the Queen? Leave and... Has much to answer for. And the ground starts to rumble oh underneath you. Oh boy. And you see it break in front of you, crash, as it sits up, shattering, reforming, deforming the earth around it. This enormous dragonborn head, stone. Gray, smooth, like a moving statue, an enormous moving statue sits up, breaking, cracking through the ground under which it had buried itself. I will see her. Great. Okay. okay. And I think we should just remember that there's been a lot of time to pass, so we should just, you know, come in with an open mind. Or, or not. Lily. <laughs> As you say those words, <laughs> the amulet on your chest <gasps> flashes. All of you feel your bodies begin to harden, to petrify. It starts deep within you. Your breathing strained, your heart slowing, your muscles stiffening. Even your eyes cannot shift, cannot look in any other direction. Every part of your body solidifies and you become cold, immovable stone. Then a flash of white 
There is nothingness for a second. And the next thing you're aware, you once again have the sensation of being inside a body that is not your own. Lily, you once again feel taller. James, you once again feel shorter. All of you back in the bodies of the champions of the Ariat Age. Once again, you are experiencing a memory through their eyes. Ugo, you feel the crossed swords at your back and the stiff metal plate mail of Nicholas Kiln. Fahima, you have that sensation of gliding and wear a brilliant, shimmering cloak of Miracis Blue. Lily, you feel the long braided ponytail and the tight leather jerkin of Rella Tallrunner. James, you sense the twin hammers at your sides and the full beard of Orad Ironmark. And most of all, Siv. Most vivid in your senses, the memory crisp and personal. You look down and see the scaled orange dragonborn skin of Jean Laulon. And that feeling of weight and heaviness, that sensation of hardening, of petrification deep inside you, that persists too. Siv, you feel this pressure, this burden, and the sensation of cold, hard stone on your palms. You look down and see a granite slab, a polished stonework table upon which your hands rest. You, all of you, are seated around this massive table inside a round room with swooping vaulted ceilings. High above you, an enormous chandelier casts dim shadows against the carved rock walls. The room is empty, save for the five of you. And a sixth. A lithe, dragonborn woman with orange scales wearing delicate blue silk. You recognize her from your very first vision. The queen. There's a long moment as the chill of the room and the cold of the polished granite table seeps into your bones. Then she speaks. There is no other way, no other power that can rival Onivrius now, no other source. You are the best of us. The only ones who stand a chance. A coordinated attack in its lair, using the raiments. The words hang heavy in the air, like stones themselves. She continues. If we do this, it will end our alliance with the dragons forever. It will sever their bond with the Shazen Gao, destroying an accord that has benefited our dynasty and our world for countless generations. And it will provoke the wrath of all the dragons who do not forget and do not forgive. She looks at you, Siv, at Zhang Laolong. We are dragonborn. This will be a betrayal of everything our empire was built on. But if we lack the courage of our conviction, or if we fail, it will surely mean the end of more than just our good standing with the dragons. How long before the fate of the Blue Elves is the fate of us all? As with everything since this war began, our choice is an impossible one. But it is inevitable. We must harden our hearts and do what must be done. We must kill no Nezeron. But I promise you, if we succeed, 
if our full plan comes to fruition. She looks at you again, Siv. If our new ally can really do what he claims, none of you and no one in all of Ein will have the burden of remembering any of it. I try to speak. Does it work? The words hang in the air and catch in your throat. And there is a flash of white. Again, you are transported. Again, inside the same foreign bodies, but a different time and a different place. Earlier, farther into the past. You feel hard soil under your feet, dirt and rock, barren and exposed, cracked and broken. A battlefield, a war zone. Each of you stands holding your weapons unsheathed. Your raiments, the magical items you saw the champions use in their fight against the Chrono Dragon, pulse with energy freshly expended. Your muscles are weary and strained. The blood and grime of battle covers your armor. And around you, hundreds, if not thousands of people stand in the rubble of a decimated city. The shock and fear on their faces hits you like a ton of bricks. Their ears are pointed. Their skin is blue. Fahima, your connection with this body you're inside, this shared sensation all of you have experienced in each of the visions before, means that you, Fahima, are feeling an intense kinship with these people, an allegiance, an emotional connection, and a horror. There are bodies everywhere. Slaughter on a scale none of you has witnessed before. Even the assault on Turles was nothing compared to this. The survivors stand, mouths agape, staring at something in the distance, something sinister. You follow their gaze and see a swirling, roiling presence hovering at the horizon line, a face blotting out the sun, a manifestation of something beyond the mortal realm. Its voice booms and pierces. Do you not see? You are beholden unto me. I put you in fear that you may know yourselves to be but mortals, and that I I, Onevrius the Keen, Onevrius the Maker, Onevrius the Omnipotent, I, I am become death. And you, you are my subjects. As the hideous, horrible voice rings out over the entire scene, there isn't even a moment to contemplate what is happening before the screaming starts. All around you, on every side, blue elves collapse in agony, writhing in pain and screaming out for help. Hundreds, if not thousands of people consumed, controlled. Over the screams and cries and chaos of the scene, you hear a terrible voice booming, chanting. I pursue my enemies and overtake them. I do not turn back till they are destroyed. I crush them so they cannot rise. They fall beneath my feet. They cry for help, but there is no one to save them. They cry to their champions who do not answer. I beat them as fine as wind-blown dust. 
I trample them like mud in the streets. You watch as the blue elves thrashing about on the ground begin to be pulled slowly under the surface, uh. dragged by some terrible force down, 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 a hole opening up beneath them, their skin graying, their eyes bulging, their hair turning white, all of them clawing and fighting, trying to stop the process, trying to stay on the surface, but the very ground itself seems to be swallowing them whole, pressing them against their will underneath, devouring them one by one and transforming them into something else, something darker, something more devoted. Roll initiative. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Sorry, what? <laughs> roll <laughs> initiative. Siv, yep. you have a straight roll. Fahima, you have advantage from Vision XD5588. James, you have a straight roll. Ugly, you have a straight roll. Lily, you have advantage from Idaho Judd. Oh, thank goodness, Idaho Judd. I rolled a nat one again on my initiative. Oh, I got a nat 20. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Wait, we're in initiative? 11. That's with my negative five from the previous uh, thing. Right. Uh, uh, Hema. 14. James. 13. Go. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> right. Dang. Lily, you are the first to act. Running, grabbing, trying to pry bodies out of the ground, trying to stop the blue elves from being eradicated. But it is no use. The fury of a god has damned these people. Next up, James. No, I'm sorry. Fahima. Fahima. The immensity of what you're seeing, the doom of the blue elves is for a moment too much to take in. This emotion from the body of Miracis Blue floods your senses, overwhelms you. You are paralyzed for a moment. But then you act. Roll a constitution saving throw, Fahima, please. Oh. Can I use any advantages or disadvantages? There are no advantages in the, in the queue. Okay. okay. 11. You feel your body begin to be pulled, to be dragged underneath. You are fighting, squirming, writhing. Next up, James. James, uh, as Orad Ironmark, you look over and you see Fahima. You see inside Miris's blue Fahima, these two forged into one fall on the ground and start to be pulled underneath. Fahima, you sense the subtle presence of the coronet on your forehead, the raiment connected to the winds, to the very air itself. With barely a thought, you lift from the ground, buffeted by a cushion of air, and you glide moving with incredible speed. That drag, that pull of the ground attempting to consume you is no longer present. You feel an impulse from deep within you, from within Miracis, a surge of intention, a desperate hope and an intense focus. You, she, pushes her will through the coronet, through the power that this diamond at its center courses with. A torrent of wind flows through you, up and out of your body and across the battlefield. A massive gust blasts into groups of blue elves, lifting them up off the ground, even as the ground itself tries to consume them. The gust gains strength, growing into a full-blown tornado. A cyclone that draws up dozens of bodies, carrying them up and out and into the air. An incredible sight. It immediately and undeniably reminds you of the petroglyph you saw in the fortress of the former forges. The image that alighted when you spoke the password, Arise. Glowing magma backlighting a rendering of this exact moment. When a precious few blue elves were saved from their subterranean fate. 
Suddenly, all of you are running, chasing the tornado, chasing the last surviving elves, running, fleeing the scene, trying to escape the devastation, even as more screams echo out behind you. The hundreds of elves who were not swept up in the cyclone's path. Siv, you feel an impulse now, a movement from Zhang Laolong. On a dead sprint, you reach down inside your breastplate between your slick orange scales and your sharp angular armor, and you retrieve a small whistle hanging around your neck on a chain. Bringing it up to your thin dragonborn lips, you blow into it. Of the five of you, only you can hear the sound that emits from this instrument, but as your dragonborn ears pick out the distinct tone, the rest of you perceive something else. Caws and cries from far in the distance. Winged creatures answering their summons, flying with incredible speed, loyal and brave, wormlings and whelps, drakes and dragons, eager to come to the aid of the dragonborn. They fly into the heart of the churning cyclone and snatch the surviving blue elves out of it. Others swoop down and match your pace, allowing each of you to leap onto their backs, a rescue at incredible speed. You're plucked off of the ground and lifted into the air on beating wings. Behind you, the sinister presence of Onivrius the Omnipotent, still laughing and chanting as dozens more flailing bodies sink helplessly into the earth. Then, a flash of white. You are transported once again. You are standing in a long corridor, a hallway, pressed white stone under your feet. Everybody roll me a history check. Uh, straight rolls across the board. 23. Seven. 27. Oh, zero. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a 10. Fahima, you are the first to notice it, but both you and James recognize this as the inside of the dwarven fortress of the former forges. The sounds of work and activity resonate from beyond the walls. It seems this facility is in full working order, filled with dwarves, producing wondrous items just outside the door. But in here, in this hallway, the five of you stand waiting. There is a weariness, a heaviness different from the previous visions. You feel broken, cracked deep in your core. No longer wearing armor, each of you stands in formal attire befitting your station. You wait for a moment and hear the clack of boots on this pristine surface. You look up to see the dragonborn queen emerge from a door and approach. She arrives at the front of you and takes each of you in. Then she smiles. Let me see it, she says. Lily, in your hands, in the hands of Rella Tallrunner, you hold a porcelain urn decorated with all manner of intricate symbols and glyphs, a beautifully crafted piece, and one you instantly recognize from the vision you witnessed in the alabaster woods, the urn you saw Rella protecting from unseen enemies. You hold it out to Siv 
who stands nearest the queen. See if you have an impulse, a, a desire. With a solemn nod, you reach inside the urn and pull out a dazzling orb of light and energy, a brilliant shimmering globe sparkling in a rainbow of resplendent colors, the prismatic moat. In these hands that are not even yours, you can still feel the intense power radiating from it. It is nearly overwhelming. The queen leans in close to you, and you can see the glittering array of colors reflecting on her scales. It is truly marvelous, she says, her eyes wide. Then she catches herself. But clearly, too much for any one individual to withstand. We are not meant to be gods. She looks over at you, Fahima, to Miracis. You stand watching her, and in your hand you hold the hilt of the God Slayer blade, its charge fully expended, the grip fashioned in a style so similar to the Secret Keeper's amulet, and it rests there in your hand, inert. Long she sin, Draconis cord, the dragon's heart. Now it will be known as the God Slayer Blade. She takes a deep breath. Miracis, it could not have been easy for you to strike him down even in that state. But the world thanks you. We still have much to do to ensure the safety of Ayn. Perhaps the hardest part is still to come. We have all made the difficult decisions she looks once again at the light show emanating from the prismatic moat. But there is more. And there is no turning back now. And that's where we'll end tonight. Oh my god. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <sighs> ah, my head spinning. Yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all we're speechless. I, I'm, 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 yeah. We're all still stone. <laughs> <laughs> next week, we will find out what happens next. And what, what the heroes of Bingle do with this information and with, one presumes, the Quake Warden. Uh, 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 Road trip! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Quakey! <laughs> we'll hop on. We, you walk we'll get us back. snacks. We'll tell stories. And can we leave? We still gotta find Conroy. I know. Right? <laughs> He's not there. But where is he? He didn't. He didn't get that far. That's what the didn't. ant people were saying. He didn't get that far. I'm. My mind is still stuck on on the ant queen and and what exactly she was saying because I would have it for like a second and then it would go away. <laughs> I'm like, oh wait, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> yeah. I think I get it. No, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> All right. Wow, Jeff. Wow, Jeff. Morgan, Jeff you were clearly up. never a eleven year old girl, uh, whereas I it seems was. Uh, hey, Latin. Yeah. No, it wasn't Pig Latin. It wasn't Pig Latin, but it was similar. It was yeah, a similar it, form. Yeah, it had a similar yeah. bent. Was... Just like uh, Blah Blibu. 
<laughs> similar. Right. I'm a one-trick pony. Be blue. No, no. I mean, obviously, it was so different that we. It sounded like a different language, and we couldn't understand it. So you're yeah. not a one-trick pony. You're a, you're a one-trick pony with like bells and whistles and rockets. So we're just gonna keep the stream going for 30 more minutes while we talk about how cool all of that was. The yeah. voice of Onevrius, like yeah. what? Yeah, that was wild. That was wild. Jeff. I was not expecting that at all. This like, yeah. this Helium. tenor voice, <laughs> this bananas. Oh my goodness! Wow, Jeff, I do have one question. Did Onevrius have like a, a a telltale, like were there pointed ears or were they, you know, like gnomish or could we tell from the face that was shown or is it more of a just indistinct? Indis uh, I think it was more indistinct. Um, we can yeah we can explore that in the next episode if you want to try to figure that out. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Woof. Wow! 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 Woof! All right. I mean, that's what I expected to happen. I don't know what you I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> called it, and we met, and we met a depressed warden, which you know I can relate. <laughs> There's always got to be one emo warden. You know? <laughs> I don't know if he's depressed so much. I don't want to save the world. <laughs> cold. <laughs> I said, cold as stone. Yep. Hard as stone. Yeah. Hard as stone. Oh man. All right. So. Whew. I mean, I, I, I would, I'm happy to stay in here and just talking about it, but we, we, we do have uh, we do have some business to do, which is related to our lovely patrons. You know that this show is only possible because of our patrons over at patreon.com slash the dungeon run. And our topmost tiers get uh, of, of uh, contributors get a really special perk as well as all the other perks, but they get a really cool perk where they get their name read out at the end of the show, but not just boring old recitation of their name. No, we like to have a little bit of fun with it. We like to get suggestions from the audience, from our patrons, uh, to do it in a fun way. You could probably tell I'm vamping because I don't have them lit up right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it up fun. Where are vamping? Go vamp. All right, I found it. I found it. Okay, so we uh, we uh, we asked for patrons to submit ideas on our Patreon for ways to read out these names, and we will do that now. Uh, we will do Team Force of Good first. Uh, Morgan, would you like to roll that fun die that we have with the names on it? Siv. Ooh. Cool. Siv. Okay, I think Siv's going to knock this out of the park. This was submitted. Not that any of you wouldn't. But you, you all knock it out of the park. No, but, shots fired. Uh, we hear you. <laughs> no, it's a I'm offended. I mean. <laughs> Hope you made uh, Ron walk off. Uh, this was submitted by Thomas Calton. Calton? I, Calton? Thomas, I apologize if I mispronounced that. Um, this <laughs> will be re read in the style of a locker room pep talk when the team is down at halftime. I figured it's Super Bowl week. Right. Might as well lean into it on this here Dungeons and Dragons show. Sure, sure, sure. Lord help me. That's a locker that's room pep time. talk where the team is down at halftime. Take it away, Sib. Or, uh, uh, all right, 49ers. I know we've oh! had uh, I know we've had a, a a really good season this year. I know it's the playoffs. I know I know we're going into this thinking we're gonna have that Super Bowl ring, but I need Beaker Par. <laughs> I need a little ID Kai. And I need Desert Wanderer out there on the field, playing with all of your heart and soul. Every last little bit, every little hyper boy 66 that you have tucked away in your pants, I need you to pull it out now. Pull up your bootstraps, grab your IR Mukau, your Finderil, slap it around. Bring out your gold family. Remember the gold family. Remember the gold family. Get that image in your head. And if there's a little bit of seraphy creeping around back there telling you you don't have what it takes you can't handle it you're not a braba well guess what slap that sloppy goats bakery right out of your head <laughs> and get into gear because we're not just jewels we're the gods of just jewels we are going to rip every single jewel off of their shiny little uniform and we're gonna kitty scratch them until they bleed yeah! Armando 89! <laughs> Armando 89! Let me hear it! Armando 89! I don't believe you. You're a bunch of Hadrian Xers. I want to hear a real Armando 89. Give it everything you got. Armando, Armando 89. 89! That's right. That's right. 
And if Wilbro Jr. can get us three points, then Bob Harris can get us 14 points, which is exactly what we need. Don't think about the past decisions that we've made out there on the field. Think about what we're going to do in the future. We need references, and we need them now. We also need get to run there. to Hadrian X play. Let's do it! That's right. That's right. Uh, Coach, Hyperboy is actually number 64, but that, that's all right. <laughs> also, I thought we were the 49ers. Where did this 89 come from? I don't... 49, it's a play. 89 it's a play. Get is, out there. It's You're a water boy. times two. <laughs> No. <laughs> We're all the water boys. The team <laughs> left a long time ago. Coach, Check I don't out. think the team has come inside yet. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it was a great speech. That was yeah. incredible, Jared. I'm if you very just do impressed. that again, I'm sure you'll get everybody excited. Yeah. All right. Uh, that was fantastic, Jared. Ooh. K-Jack, ladies well, and gentlemen. Done. Yeah, well go done. 49ers. Well done. I wish. I mean, they're not <laughs> We that was a low blow, my friend. Low I know. Blow. I had to. I had uh, to. It all right. I don't know anything low, low you're talking fruit. about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roll that dive for the team force of e evil names. Lily. Lily. I'm oh, three weeks in a row. Great. Lily. And I don't think I've gone in like a month. <laughs> The dice well, is weighted. Well, you, can, you can, you guys can do it together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was. This would be fun if you guys. It, <laughs> with me, this, be, this, this needs more like than one portal. person. Okay. All right. What's that? The ladies. Ladies, the ladies. All right. This is submitted by Peter Desmet, who says you should do it in the style of an old sailor trying to convince the patrons in the local town pub. That they saw a sea monster. Uh, here it comes. Here it comes. All right, everybody, listen up. Captain's gonna speak. All right. Oh, all right. All right. It must all right. be Tuesday. Make it quick. I remember the last hey, time. Gonna make the world. Where's me chicken strips? <laughs> chicken strips. This isn't a TGI Fridays. It's a pub. Uh, it's right. TGI Tuesdays. <laughs> Listen, what my first mate was saying is right. We were out there and the sea was raging. And we were all down to clown. Who's all down to clown? Yeah, Arr. it was looking bad. Dramas piranhas were 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 flopping on the deck. <gasps> Corbin played went right overboard. Oh no. Rest in oh. peace. May rest in have, peace. Have you told Mrs. Gorman played yet? <laughs> not red, not yet. And if she's here, sorry if I told you that way. <laughs> well, then those 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 big waves just about she rocked my teeth right out of my. Oh, head. those teeth were ready to come out, and that's when it got. That's wild, man. You know. Aren't your teeth made of wood, though? <laughs> okay, well the teeth are beyond the point. Okay, the thing is, then what we saw then the forest self. 86. I saw him ride out of the student of Grim Wave. And me first made here, she says, I think I'm nuts. And I said, I see it too. You don't know. Like you that. don't normally see a forest elf come out of the sea. No That's worries. wild, man. That's right wild. The student of Grim. It had two tails. Two. Where, where was the second one? On its face or head or top or what? It was kind of like an earthworm situation, one on either side. I yes. think I'm nuts because I was there and none of that seemed to happen. It was uh, literally just fish flopping on the on the deck there. Uh, well, we if you don't listen it. to the captain, you're going to be a student of Grim. Sure enough, you're going to go straight to your grave, mighty. <laughs> Hey barkeep, I think all these beers are expired. I just discovered that they're all they all went went past due like, like who's six this months man ago. who just wants chicken strips and <laughs> do some administrative tasks at the bar? No, no, think... Captain, uh, uh, point of clarification: mm. if a if a mermaid has uh, two tails, isn't that just a fish? Uh, well. <laughs> With the, the fish that you see, the fish on the bottom a... and the fish on the top. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's not the mermaid. The tails anymore. were like this. It's a half I fish. thought, well, that's a fish without a face. Listen, if you're going to start <laughs> teaching ichthyology here at the local pub, we're going to need some references. Can someone get a chalkboard or something? Because I'm going to need a visual on the I like the diagram need. of the mermaid. Because <laughs> if it's a double tailed mermaid with the one over human body, then no. I'm just saying a, a mermaid is the bottom half a fish and the top half a person. And if you have uh, the bottom half a fish and the top half a fish, that's a fish. Are you yeah. trying to get yeah. my or, job? Or, or it's a Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been a Pisces. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens yeah, when you have yeah, a I'm bottom a top half, a top half mermaid human, and a bottom half mermaid mermaid human? Is it just two people then? That's just me first mate here. Is it just Siamese twins? <laughs> oh no! Uh, <laughs> this conversation goes on all night. We yeah, finished the done. names like ten minutes yeah. ago. Ten <laughs> minutes ago. <We've> done. Done. <laughs> 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 so what you're saying is <laughs> All right. I am confused about the general workings of human anatomy. <laughs> this is why the pirates were so easily led by Whitebeard, because they were just yeah. like he just came in and told oh them what God. was what. We should just do an entire one shot where we play pirates of, of Whitebeard and That's just talk about idea. what's going on. Yeah. Great idea. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Whitebeard never shows up. It's just the yeah. pirates of Whitebeard. <laughs> the pirates. They're always looking for Whitebeard and can sure, never sure, find sure. him. Yeah. Yeah. The, the one shot is called Whitebeard's on leave. <laughs> 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 All right. That's it for this episode. Thank Great. you for watching. We really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody that uh, donated and, and purchased uh, yams and, and balloons what and happened? taters and uh, advantages and disadvantages. Oh, yeah. where, where did we end up? Well, Team Force of Good ran away with it. 82%. Force of Evil only 18%. So a Force of Good card will be unlocked next episode. Wow, wow, wow. I think you shocked everyone into stillness in the second half, Jack. <laughs> Team Force I... of Good ran away. Looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Until then, humankind. Be both. Be both. Mwah. Doing great, Kirk. <laughs>